college fever has hit the College Park campus at the University of Maryland as excitement and passion for this Terrapin team have reached levels not seen in nearly two decades. First-year head coach Ralph Friedgen has Maryland at an 8-1 and one start and sitting atop the ACC standings. An explosive offense led by quarterback Sean Hill and tailback Bruce Perry, coupled with an opportunistic defense captained by linebacker E.J. Henderson, has these Terps dreaming big. Tonight, quarterback Woodrow Dantzler and the Clemson Tigers take their shot at derailing the high-flying Terrapin train. ESPN2, primetime college football from sold out Bird Stadium at capacity for the first time in six years for a very critical matchup in the ACC race. The Clemson Tigers against the 11th ranked first place, Maryland Terrapins. They don't know it here in the stadium yet, but Florida State has lost 34 28 to North Carolina State, meaning if Maryland wins tonight and defeats NC State next week, they have their first ACC championship in 16 years and a berth at a BCS Bowl. Welcome to College Park. I'm Dave Barnett alongside Bill Curry, Mike Golick, and Michelle Tafoya. Well, Ralph Friedgen waited 32 years for the shot at being a head coach, and he inherited a team, his alma mater, that was mired in the worst stretch of mediocrity in the history of the Atlantic Coast Conference. It's 15 years of not even finishing in the top Three. It had been 11 years since they'd been to a bowl this year. They were the first team in the country to be bowl eligible. The only question is now where they will go bowling. And, Bill, one thing that I think any coach will understand is that what Ralph Friedgen has done in about three or four months, a lot of coaches would have loved to do in three or four years. Yes, indeed, Dave. Let's just call it the Friesian synergistic effect. Synergism is just a 50-cent word for teams that play better than they really are. Maryland has good players, but they're playing better than good football. Big numbers on offense. 8-1 and one is a big number for a one-loss record. And 7-0 and oh is what they can accomplish here at home for the very first time in the history of Maryland football if they should win tonight. And Michelle Tafoya, it would appear that the big man's having an impact on the public as well. Indeed he is, Bill. I'm standing in uh, Friedgen's office, which is here in the south end zone of Bird Stadium. And from here, he's got a perfect view of all the seats he was hired to fill. And a sellout has been one of his biggest goals since he took the job here at Maryland. In fact, three weeks ago, before the homecoming game against Duke, when it wasn't a sellout, he said, if people don't want to get in these seats when we're 7-0, and shame on them. These kids deserve more. Well, apparently the fans heard tonight's crowd is the largest here since 1983 and Friedgen calls this the biggest game played around here in about 20 years. Indeed a win tonight could put them in a BCS Bowl but Mike Golick if they are going to win tonight they're going to have to overcome one of the nation's best quarterbacks. Michelle Woody you are Danzler. absolutely right. I don't think anybody would argue that Woody Danzler is the most exciting player in all of college football. He can do it to you behind the line of scrimmage. He's thrown for 11 touchdowns, or he can make your jaw absolutely drop on defense as he's rushed for nine touchdowns while leaving many defenders in his wake. He's had a lot of success against Maryland, especially the last two years in Clemson wins. He has accounted for 708 total yards in those games. And Dave, with kickoff just a few minutes away here in Maryland of Woody Danzler's 20 touchdowns this year that he's accounted for, 13 of those have been on the road. Clemson's been a very good road team, a bad home team. Those extra seats may become a permanent sight here at Bird Stadium as we send you to Reese Davis. All right, guys, Mark Mays here, too. And Mark, I think those people in those seats are going to go nuts when they hear the Florida State score, don't you think? I think they're going to go crazy. <laughs> I think it's going to be one of those energy environments that, you know, you have to be there to experience, particularly for those fans at Maryland. All right, let's run through a few scores for you right now. And we'll start with Washington and Oregon State. Washington still holding out hopes of getting into a BCS Bowl. That is not going to happen. 49-24, Oregon State laying a whipping on them in Corvallis 3 and change left to go in that one. Oregon, meanwhile, going into the Rose Bowl, and as is their custom against UCLA. The game decided on the final play when UCLA missed a field goal. The Ducks 9-1. Now they have to wait until December 1st before they play Oregon State. And that Oregon State game's looming larger and larger down the road. Before today, Oregon was probably looking at Oregon State as a patsy. Now the way that Oregon State played today against Washington, this is going to be a huge game for Oregon. And did we mention Florida State? 
for the first time since the Seminoles joined the ACC back in 1992, they lose a conference game at home 34-28 to Chuck Amato and the Wolfpack. Do you think Bobby Bowden wants to face a team with North Carolina in his name in the next year or so? It has not been a good year for taking on the main schools, the big schools, the state schools in North Carolina. Well, a school from South Carolina is going to try to stop this guy. Bruce Perry, the ACC's leading rusher, spent some time atop the list in the nation to see what Clemson can do with him coming up next. Bird Stadium normally capacity 48,000. Tonight, somewhere over 51,000. Sold out first time in six years for a good reason. Maryland has a chance to take a big step toward an ACC championship, but this series has not been very kind to them. Clemson has won the last eight by an average of about 20 points per game. 35-14 last year. Another big game for Woodrow Dantzler. And uh, Tommy Bowden, who is 2-0 as the Clemson head coach against the Terps. And the common threat has been a dominant rushing attack. 284 yards on the ground per game in those first two. He's 20-12 and 12 after losing to his dad in Florida State last week, 41-27. to 27. But after a loss at Clemson, he has won eight and lost only one. He's been good at finding the key to a bounce-back week. It's also been good at getting this team to play extremely well on the road, 3-0 in the ACC, only 0-3 at home. And Ralph Friedgen tries to keep it going. He has ignited football momentum at Maryland not seen since the Bobby Ross era ended in the mid-'80s. And the Terps will receive the opening kick from Tony Lazera. Bruce Perry, not only the top running back in the ACC, he also returns kicks for Maryland. And just as we came on the air, the announcement made here at Bird Stadium that Florida State had lost for the first time ever at home in ACC play. They know what that means here. The Terps control their own destiny. Rosera bringing it down to the one to Perry. Perry slipping the tackle and a return to the 19-yard line. From that point, we'll see Sean Hill, the senior from Parsons, Kansas, go to work with the top offense in the ACC. 448 yards per game. Sean Hill not highly recruited at all. Got two Division II offers as a quarterback. Went to Hutchinson's Community College and now running the Maryland show. The bug backs and receivers with Perry joined by Lynch in the backfield. Gary Williams and Dugan who Friedgen thinks is the best blocking tight end in the ACC. Not a bad passing target as well. Right away, they try to carry through the middle. And a gain of nine brought down by Charles Hafley. And the Terp offensive line will line up this way. And you'll see that run through the middle right over that center. Melvin Fowler Jr. is 43rd consecutive start, guys. That is incredible. He is truly the anchor of that line. Up front for Clemson, McNeil, Eason, Bush, and Vaughn. Eason, a sophomore, already has his degree. An amazing story. This time sworn as Perry tries to get off left tackle and may have lost a half yard or so. The linebacking core. And the man in the middle, Chad Carson, who just made his first hit of the night, is not only a Rhodes Scholar candidate, but a hard-nosed middle linebacker made 18 tackles in their last outing. After getting shredded by the Florida State passing attack, Neekins and Hafley switched roles this week. Hafley back to free safety, covering a little more ground. They got bad results when uh, Florida State threw it deep last week. So on third and two, Hill on the roll, and he has Dugan as tight end for a first down to the 40. Seventh catch of the year. Good for 12 yards for the sophomore from Allison Park, Pennsylvania. Well, we're going to see this Maryland team tonight. They do an incredible job in turnovers. Look at the rank in there with turnover margin, interceptions, turnovers. Again, they've gotten 28. They've given up 14 on the offensive side. Their defense does a great job of getting the ball and putting the offense in great position tonight. Let's see if they can continue that trend. The only game they had a turnover deficit is the only game they lost to Florida State. Hill pumping, going deep and up the side. It is caught by Gary. Finally guided out of bounds, and they'll mark him somewhere around the 30-yard line. 
Make it the 35. Really interesting what happened here. I believe there was a miscommunication early between Julian Gary, number 21, and his quarterback, Sean Hill. Hill started to throw the out cut. Gary read tight coverage, took it up the field in the seam, and the uh, immediate adjustment by Sean Hill was terrific on his part. Perfect throw. 24 yards to Gary. You mark him at the 36. He beat Brian Mance. And the first option of the night will feature Hill keeping and turning it up for a gain of about three. Sean Hill, 6'3", 221. Maybe faster than he looks. He doesn't look that fast. No, he, he doesn't look that fast, but he's, he's got good feet, and the feet will find the hole. But I don't think he's going to outrun anybody, but he'll find the right place to run to pick up well, those he, yards. He's not like Mike Golick, who looks slow and is even slower <laughs> than he looks. This guy doesn't look very fast, but he is, Dave, you're right, he's faster than he looks. I'm yeah. sorry, Mike. Yeah, sure. Sure, you are. Mike, a lot of the Terps has redefined his role. So so backup last year. Eight and one starter this year. Throw on the run is incomplete. Let's send it down to Michelle. Well, guys, if you want a great quote from a defensive coordinator, look no further than Reggie Herring. On playing Maryland, he said, we know they're good and that they can beat the heck out of us, but we will not face them with fear. We are not stupid or ignorant, but we're also not in awe or intimidated. He said, we can't continue to give up the big plays. It's too early for Christmas, and we've already been too generous. It's not been a typical Reggie Herring defense by any stretch. But they can come up with a big stop here. On third and six, Hill in the gun and three wideouts. And Hill very well protected. Wide open Gary at the 15 to the 13. First down, Maryland. First catch for Gary, good for 24, and this one is good for 18 yards. This all begins with marvelous protection up front. Good job by Melvin Fowler, the center 67, and the right guard, Lamar Bryant. You see the twist in the middle by the defensive tackles of Clemson. Perfect pickup. And what the time gave him was Julian Gary time to clear and find that hole in the zone coverage right behind the linebackers. Great play. First down from the 14. Motion from Scooter Monroe. Dangerous deep threat. And Perry hit hard for no gain. He tried the middle and met John Leake, sophomore outside linebacker, and Chad Carson in the middle. And John Leake started out the season as a star. His uh, feisty defensive coordinator, Reggie Herring, was looking for a name for the hybrid position, named him Star, and everybody made such a big deal out of it. He said, I don't like it. I'm changing it back. He's going to be a <laughs> linebacker. It was no gain. Second and ten. And another option. Late pitch carry. And a nice block. You get a couple yards out of it by Rich Parson, true freshman wide receiver. And Brian Nance finally there right at about the 14. Maryland team averaging right at 37 points per game. So when they get in plus territory, they know what to do. 48 possessions, 38 scores. How about last week? A six for six. And Troy State is nothing to sneeze at. They played Nebraska and the University of Miami well, better than they played Maryland. So third and nine with this opening possession. And again, terrific protection to the end zone, and a flag is down as it goes off the hands of Gary. Kevin Johnson with Julian Gary in the back of the end zone. Now let's see if Kevin Johnson had a hold of Gary. Joseph Ryder, the referee. Indicating pass interference, Clemson. Mike, in studying the tapes, Gary does not have great speed, but he is really elusive. I mean, he is so quick. And you said it before, with the time that Hill has had to throw the ball, it gives your receivers time to complete those routes. Pass interference on the defense. Spot foul, automatic first down. Now, this is a spot foul, meaning at the point of the infraction, well, if that was it, that wasn't much of a foul. That's a bad that call. Was, if that was it. Now, if something happened before that when the ball first left his hand. I don't think he was close enough to have done anything before that. I think that is a bad call by the ACC officiating crew. They're still talking about it down there. 
I don't think it's changing back. That's, that was, a, that's a bad place to miss one, though. Well, you're not you're, kidding. If you're a Clemson person. Well, this is really turning into an extended discussion now. You got the field judge, Christopher Brown, over for a word. But uh, evidently, nothing more to report to us or to uh, the crowd. And first and goal it will be from the three. And again, it's not half the distance. It is a spot five. Extra tight end is in. Quick movement up front by Jovan Bush. He looked awfully convinced that he'd been drawn on. Well. Now, Michael, you never did anything like that to some poor center, did you? Guess if you're going to get the offsides, make it worth it. That's a, I think that's what Mr. Bush had in mind there. What I think, too, is don't you sometime down there just guess the snap count, and if you get it right, you mess up the play. Absolutely. If you don't, you yeah. give up a yard and a half. And well, the, well, the, well, that's the thing. If, if you're wrong, you're not giving up a whole lot. And I, Big Melvin is a great football player, the center, 42 consecutive starts, number 67 there in the middle. You get him thinking, maybe get him a little angry and maybe get him off his game a little bit. This is to the goal. <laughs> Still first down. They need to call that something other than. We have all personal fouls on the defense. On the offense, those fouls cancel. Yeah, that was a little bit of pushing and shoving. They got to think of a different name, Dave, for offside from what he did. <laughs> that was a little more than offside. That was that was assault. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you like it. Uh, you know, it's, all right, I smiled a little bit. Everybody's okay. Reggie didn't. First and goal, one and a half yard line now. Opening possession that started at their 20. With a give through the middle and with the legs turning, touchdown, Mark Riley. The ninth touchdown of the year for the senior who backs up Bruce Perry, a tailback, and the Terps take the opening kick 80 yards. And the first orange thrown in the yep. end zone out of the stands when Lou Holtz was at Arkansas and they threw oranges. They said, what do you think, Coach? He said, I'm just glad we're not going to the Gator Bowl. <laughs> Nick Novak for the PAT. Redshirt freshman who became a hero in the Georgia Tech game and has been almost perfect since. Seven to nothing, Maryland. On a night where they found out just before the opening kick that if they win this one and they win in Raleigh next week, they win the ACC and they get off to a great start. Terps takes the opening kick and 80 yards later, they lead seven to nothing. Took him 10 plays. Mark Riley finishing out from just over a yard. And Sean Hill was three out of four through the year, mostly hitting Julian Gary deep. Also a key questionable pass interference call in the end zone against Clemson. And a nice return for the Tigers, Brian Mance. Who's out to the 34-yard line. And one more look at Riley taking it in for the Terrapins. Watch number five, the fullback, right here. He leads through on Chad Carson. And bear in mind, this is a 240-pound middle linebacker. He snaps his head back and opens the hole for his back to get in the end zone. Also, the motion man, 44. That's Bernie Fiddler getting a great block on the outside to open up the hole as well. <laughs> That's a way to stay with your block. Yep. Let's go around football. Maybe the most exciting player in the country now has a chance to answer. Midhead Dantzler with the give. Travis Zachary with maybe a foot. And the Bud offensive lineup featuring Dantzler, the senior from Orangeburg, has his degree in marketing. He's the all-time leading rushing quarterback in ACC history. Zachary, the senior, the all-time leading touchdown scorer in school history with the four wides, Hamilton, Bailey, Curry, and McKelvin. Either side, right out stacked one behind the other. On second and nine, first quarterback keeper. Draw all the way, and Dantzler reaching the 43, where it will be third and one. The offensive line for Clemson. Tommy Bowden likes some light and quick. And the only 300-pounder, Gary Bird, right at 308. And up front on defense, Charles Hill, number 98, the nose guard has been the steadiest performer with a lot of swarming defensive ends and linebackers surrounding him. 
Big guys low. <laughs> Real digging in on third and one. Under center, give in the eye of the fullback, and Chad Jasmine will have the first down. Leon Joe with the stop for the Maryland linebackers. Well, we're going to talk a lot about E.J. Henderson. He looks like a middle linebacker. He's mean like a middle linebacker. He's got great football instinct and leads this team with 113 tackles. Dominique Foxworth has not played a down all year until tonight, and he starts. True freshman, they were redshirting him, but they've had problems at that corner. Tony O'Connellawan out. Bernard Wilson not healthy tonight. And a strike up the right sideline for J.J. McKelvey, who reaches the 42 of Maryland. 13 yards from Dantzler to McKelvey. Strange thing for this Clemson team. I'm not sure I've ever seen anything quite like it, but they play much better on the road than they do at home. 0-3 at home, 3-0 on the road, 37.7 points per game on the road to 18 at home. And you see the yards there. Really unusual contrast. Especially if they were a senior dominated team, it would be a little less of a surprise. This is a very young team that's figured out how to win on the road. Dantzler almost sacked, but he's got some magic to escape and fire another one complete. And inside the 30, it's Derek Hamilton, one of the young redshirt freshman receivers, 14 yards from Dantzler. Right there, Charles Hill, number 98, the nose guard, forces Dantzler out of the pocket, and he breaks your heart by breaking contain and finding a way, some kind of way, to keep the chains moving. Dantzler is a magician. Charles is standing there saying, how could I have missed the guy? So they reach the 38-yard line of Maryland. And it's Zachary. A little misdirection to the 20. Travis Zachary not listed in the starting lineup most of the week. Bernard Rambert was. We'll see some of Rambert, but Zachary, the senior, does go from the opening bell tonight. And boy, I tell you what, will a successful running game really help that passing game, getting Woody Danzler out on the corner. Maryland's got to really be cognizant and disciplined in their rush and containment of Woody Danzler to not let what happened, just what happened two plays ago, let him get outside. Cognizant? Yeah. I went to Notre Dame, my friend. Wow. That's a quarter word right there. This game last year, Zachary had the best game of his career. 151 yards against the Terps. Scooper all the way. Dantzler inside the 10, inside the 5, and first and goal from the 4. Finally brought down by Tony Jackson. 17 yards. Dantzler weaves his way to the secondary. Well, I'll tell you what. Great block. We just saw Travis Henry gain some yards. Now we see him block the best player on that Maryland defense. The man I just talked about, E.J. Henderson, he put a block on him that cleared up. Woody Danzler, right there, that's the block. That frees him. He seals in Henderson. Woody bounces right outside. Making sure he's heard. Wouldn't be surprised to see young Foxworth get tested right now. Ball at the line is the fade, corner of the end zone, and incomplete, and Dominique passes his first test, intended for Roscoe Crosby. Nice play. Nice, Bill. Well, I mean, what else would you do, really? Yeah. Now, they got trips over to one side, and they got him isolated on a veteran receiver right there. Well, Crosby's not a veteran either, but he's at least played a few plays. Nice job. Good start. Obviously not frozen at the switch in the early going. Dominique Foxworth. I like the name. Got a nice I ring. Too. Could get a nickname too out of that. Foxy? No. Right. Second and goal from the four. And Dantzler wanted to keep. You lose about four. E.J. Henderson. You know what? I think he's ready. For a nickname? <laughs> well, you can call him Blitzer. Because he came off the corner that time and he wasn't intimidated. He doesn't know who Woody Dantzler is. He knocked the stuffings out of him. He'll come from the right of your screen, misdirection, pulling lineman doesn't see him. Boom, right there. He hits the All American quarterback for a four yard loss. Back him up to the nine where it's still third and goal. Dantzler rolling and will be sacked again. Charles Hill in there. Henderson in there as usual. He has almost twice as many tackles as anybody else on the Terp defense. 
And after first and goal to four, they back up the Tigers six yards, and they'll have to hope for three out of Aaron Hunt. Boy, this defense runs well. Henderson ran him yes. down that time. Hill yes. did not let him remember, get outside. Remember, the youngster playing his first series, Foxworth, was tested twice and measured up. So from 27 yards. Hunt, did he get it just inside the upright? Barely. Matter of inches, seven to three. 54-year-old Ralph Friedgen has the Terps on the verge of a title if they take care of business. Woodbrode Dantzler drives the Clemson offense down to a first and goal at the four, and the Maryland defense digs in, pushes it back, and they have to settle for a 27-yard Aaron Hunt field goal. So 7-3 to three with 5.57 in the first quarter. Rivalry that the Tigers have had their way with for an awful long time. 13 of the last 15, there's been one tie in that span since 86. Goes all the way back to the last successful era of Maryland football. A new one has begun this year. Perry, five yards deep. And down to Michelle to Florida. Well, Dave, after the Clemson defense gave up that opening touchdown to Maryland, quite a meeting on the defensive and, uh, the defensive line bench. Joe Von Bush, who gave up that critical offsides penalty, nearly came to blows with Nick Eason. The defensive line coach, Thielen Smith, had to calm everyone down and separate them. Eason bounced right up, working his way down the defensive bench, telling everyone, let's go, let's go. Bryant McNeil may have had the line of the night. Those boys ain't so good, he said. Let's go after them. <laughs> well, those boys took it 80 yards right at them. First time they had it. It looked pretty good to me. <laughs> and now they again start from the 20, and Hill has Gary. Did he make it inbounds? No. Let's find out what's going on with the Stanford Cardinal, Reese Day. They're taking on Arizona, Dave. Stanford, of course, had a stretch of four tough games. Stanford on top, 3-0. Jason Johnson. Oh, little we'll throw back. Ferris Farmer on the wheel route. Oh, Ferris Farmer, Ferris Farmer, Ferris Farmer. 7-3, Arizona on top. That's our old buddy, Makovic. Smart guy. Wild Pac-10. More surprises this week. Bill, look how wide open all these Maryland receivers are. That's the backup tight end, Matt Murphy, making his 10th catch of the year. Good for 12 yards. Kevin Johnson drives him out. Well, one thing that Reggie Herring said to us, and he was adamant about it, we cannot afford to take chances against this offense. So they're laying back and playing zone, and there are a lot of open seams if you can't get to the quarterback with your front four. Not hard to find Reggie over there. Animated Reggie. Unbalanced. Not Reggie, the line. Both, right? <laughs> Number 32, Hill. Action keeper with room. First down, gain of 12. Before Brian Mance and Charles Hafley bring him down. He is their third leading rusher. Came in with 245 yards and six touchdowns on the ground. On runs just like this. Now, Mike, this is an unbalanced line to the right, and they just outnumbered them on the option. When you're a defensive player, this kind of thing is very frustrating. You got to get lined up quickly. Mike, it's difficult when you, if you're tired. Luckily, they're not tired yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's perceptive, man. Really in motion. And here we'll keep again. A little bit better defended this time. Hayfleet. Hey, Senior, another one of the seven Tigers already with a degree, his in sociology. Back from strong safety to free safety this week. Seriously, Mike, talk about the option, what it does to the defensive team. Well, a lot of it depends on the type of, if they're going to option you or if they're trying to block you. The one where, where Sean Hill had the good run, Dugan, the, the uh, tight end, had a great seal block on the linebacker to get him through. If it's pure option, you just got to play your responsibility. From the 48, short drop, they come with the blitz and it's incomplete. Rich Parson had it in his hands. Back to Reese Moore from the Pac-10. All right, Dave, Washington State and Arizona State with Washington already having lost today. Wazoo trying to stay even with Oregon in record. Jason Gesser for Jerome Riley and Wazoo on top of the Sun Devils 14-7 in the second. Well, who would have thought Washington State picked last right at the top battling for the lead in the Pac-10. 
Not unlike the Terps, pick seventh in the ACC. First by themselves as of tonight. On third down, all alone carry out in space and drags Johnson right to the first down marker with a yard to spare. And they're just doing a great job of mixing up plays, going to different areas, looking downfield, having your receivers come out of the backfield. Look at Hill looking straight down the field. Then he looks off to Perry at the end. What that does, it gives Perry space when he makes the catch. He's able to make the move one-on-one -on -one and get the first down. Hill will look at everything he's got. They said last week he hit his fifth option on a third and long to convert. Another blitz by Carson. Got it off and through the hands of James Lynch. Pretty accurate toss with Carson bearing down on it. Yeah, Carson got pressure that time, and this is one of the rare times that Clemson is going to take a chance and blitz, and he came clean. Blitz is always more effective when it comes as a surprise to the offensive right. line. Nobody picked him up. He rushed the throw, and they get a second and ten out of the deal. Now the offset eye this time. Bill steps up, and a flag down as Scooter Monroe makes the catch. At the 36, covered there by Brian Mance. Well, that flag usually in that area means holding, which means it's going to come back. I saw Melvin Fowler, the center, kind of throw his hands up like, what me? When you, when you do that, Bill, what does that usually mean? That usually means you were engaged in something yeah. that you're not proud of. But I happened to be watching Melvin that time. I don't think he was holding. We'll have to see. Holding Somebody was. On the offense. Ten yards from the previous spot. Repeat second down. I saw him look up at the referee and put his hands up in the air like it wasn't me. And maybe it wasn't him, but they nailed somebody on that line. Yeah. Well, as you know, centers very seldom make mistakes. See, not Especially even, this one. I mean, he, this guy's really good. He is an excellent senator. No, he'll be he'll be playing next year on Sunday. Yep. It's on the Maryland chess team. Yep. Ever heard of that? Smart guy. An alignment or anybody else. Second and 20 now for here. And now Chase mm. and dropped from behind by a quick closing Khalid Vaughn. Sophomore defensive end from Atlanta with a huge sack. And the much maligned Clemson secondary. The reason for that sack was that the secondary covered everybody well, Mike. Sean, Sean Hill's got to feel this, old Bill. He's got to know it. He's know he's breathing down. Throw it away. In college, pro, you're allowed now outside the box. Throw it away. He saw him coming. He started to break outside. you got to feel that pressure and get rid of the ball. Save yourself the loss. You are right as usual. Thank you, Professor. Let's so see what they have on third and 26. <laughs> there ain't no place to third and 26. <laughs> and again, 35 of the Tigers. On the ground, Riley, who has the Maryland touchdown. Colorado and Iowa State in the Big 12. Reed. Dave Seneca Wallace was bottled up pretty well by K-State last week. The Iowa State quarterback finding Lane Danielson. He'll take it to the house to put the Cyclones up by a count of 7-3. to three, But Bobby Pesavento would answer. Cedric Cormier would have the touchdown. You know, an Iowa State win would put Nebraska officially in the Big 12 title game. But Colorado's up three. Brooks Bernard, number four punter in the nation. Leads the ACC just under 45 yards per kick. Good directional punter. Good at getting rolls. And stops inside the 20. How about inside the 5 this time? Nice roll. I tell you, that's not pretty, but it sure does count. 47-yarder with no return. Woodrow Dantzler and the Tigers backed up in a hole and trailing 7-3. ESPN 2's presentation of primetime college football is brought to you by Bud Light. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down, make it a Bud Light. And by Bowflex. Visit Bowflex online at www.bowflex-endzone.com. Inside Bird Stadium, biggest crowd in nearly 20 years for what Ralph Regan says is the biggest game in about that long. And Maryland not doing badly so far. Up 7-3, and they back up Clemson to their four-yard line for their second possession. This is a good place to go up top against the youngster and see if you can get a 95-yarder. I have seen it more than once. And Matt Bailey, top your picture. 
It was being covered by the freshman Dominic Foxworth, but it's going the other way. And the catch by Roscoe Crosby. Prize, true freshman wide receiver, along with Aries Curry, Tommy Bowden, got him away from his dad who wanted them to sign with Florida State very badly. Great recruiting twos for Tommy, and that's good for 14 yards. They do a, such a nice job of running off with the with the wide receiver on the, the bottom, would have been on the bottom of your screen, rolling Woody out. Everybody wondering if Woody's gonna run. They're coming up to stop him. Boom, you get a wide open receiver. Crosby, South Carolina's Mr. Football. And Census High School All-America. Getting better every week. Play fit. Gansler ready to hang one deep for McKelvey. And Foxworth running with him stride for stride. Hard to believe this is the first time he has ever been in a game. He is just having a ball. He's doing it exactly the right way. He's playing loose. He's reading. He's got that receiver on his outside hip. That was all perfectly legal. Nice job. It was great of coverage. It was yes. great because he knew where the, he knew where the player was by by his yes. hands and was watching the ball. That, that was guy, an upperclassman move right he's there. He's got presence. They're going to keep testing him. Tried to get a big one on him right there. Flags and whistles. You know what, Mike Henderson was loose through the A gap right there. He's got that knack of slipping and turning his shoulder right so the, the lineman loses it. start on the offense. Five yards, still first down. And the A gap is? The A gap is between the guard and the center. And this guy, Henderson, is just, he's a big guy, but he knows how to, he's slithery. He sort of turns his shoulders and the guard and center lose him. And next thing you know, he's in the backfield. What, what the coach has said with him is football instinct. He knows he knows where he's going. There's the A-gap on either gap. side of the center. So second and 15. And on the ground for nothing. For Zachary down to Michelle. Well, Dave, as you know, Woody Dantzler is a notorious perfectionist. And last month against NC State, he had the school's best ever performance for total offense. I mean, look at the numbers that he had. 184 yards and two touchdowns rushing, 333 yards and four touchdowns passing with no interceptions. But after the game, he said, until I get that perfect game, I won't be satisfied. We've got to go out and score on every drive. No negative yards, no penalties. Unbelievable perfectionism. Those numbers beat the record he had previously set in this game here two years ago, and he had 435 total yards. But it's never enough for the perfectionist dancer. Good as he gets that one up in the air, and it is brought down by Crosby out of bounds. No catch. How many quarterbacks even get close to hitting that pass when you get hit like Dantzler was hit? Leon Joe, number 32, is clean because of a very clever stunt. This backer comes here. He loops around. There's nobody to pick him up. He forces the quicker throw than what he wanted to throw it, and he forced the incompletion. Oh, and that left foot just out of bounds. That's a tough stunt, Mike. Wincock standing at the goal line. And uh, signaling the fair catch, Gary lets it go over his head and does cop a big favor as it's down at the 31-yard line. 48 yards on the kick. Well, tomorrow night, Jerry Rice, Tim Brown, Rich Gannon, the Oakland Raiders looking to remain undefeated in the AFC West. They visit Mike Holmgren, Seattle Seahawks for the last time as division rivals. Coverage beginning with NFL primetime at 7.30. And Rich Gannon with numbers that lead all NFL quarterbacks. Only one interception. Sean Hill from the 31-yard line. With a minute 20 in the first quarter, leading 7-3. And Riley hit as he takes that handoff. That's the second time we've seen how quickly Khalid Vaughn can recognize and move. Great job coming in from the outside. Supposed to get kicked out. He's going to come right here. Supposed to be a trap on him. Lamar Bryant, the man that's supposed to get him, can't get him too quick for him around the corner. Looked like a young Mike Gullick 
dropped, he wouldn't have got there. <laughs> but you would. I saw you play. Good on second and 11. First pass he's thrown. Had no chance to get to Jafar Williams. Another Stanford, Arizona look from Reese. Dave Chris Lewis going to that big wide receiver, Teo Johnson. You know, he plays basketball too. Teo had made a big catch to get him down in scoring territory. And then a beautiful one handed grab for the touchdown. Stanford and Arizona tied to 10 in the first quarter. And Seneca Wallace just scored on the ground after throwing a touchdown pass. Iowa State up by four on Colorado. And Maryland looking at third and 11. They're in the gun. Benson coming with a stop ball is underthrown and almost intercepted. Rodney Feaster had a hand on it. Intended for Daryl Whitmer. Fortunate it wasn't picked off. And big Jovan Bush got pressure. Uh-oh, somebody's somebody's down. That's, uh, That's Leroy, Leroy Hill, Hill, number 43. Freshman, middle linebacker. Have to hope it's uh, just something minor. Jovan Bush got pressure that time. Instead of pressuring his buddy Nick Easton, he decided to pressure <laughs> the other team's quarterback. And you get that tip ball like you did. You never know what's going to happen with that. As Boston College found out oh, today against Miami. Oh, did they ever. That's what happened to Hill, freshman from Haddock, Georgia. Well, a mid-air collision with Feaster as they both go for the interception. Can't see how he landed. Well, it looks like the kind of thing where you just get the wind knocked out of you, and that's what that's what we have to hope that it's very minor. 36 seconds in the first quarter when we come back to College Park. And that's what we hope to see. Leroy Hill got up, jogged off, appears to be okay, and now Brooks Bernard to kick on fourth down and 11. And there's a high snap from John Condo. You don't see a lot of hang time, but you will see good directional punting from Bernard. And tough to return most of the time. This one rolling dead just inside the 20, and that's good for 50 yards. <laughs> wow. The guy leads the ACC in net punting with 40.2, and all he's done is um, kick line drives away from the returner, and it's working that's so about far. A, that's about a second and a half hang time. <laughs> but what you do... Mike, when, you, when that's happened to you, is you put two returners back there, and if he's shanking them right or left, yep. you put him where he's consistently Scoop kicking. Put, the the guy, and go. put him 27 yep. yards deep and catch it on the fly, and either fair catch it there for a 27-yarder or run it down their throat. So the Tigers, maybe in the last play of the first quarter, and a dart is caught at the 28-yard line by J.J. McKelvey, the third leading receiver out of Monk's Corner, South Carolina keep doing that until they stop it they've hit that about three times tonight either the back or the wide receiver that's an open area there in the flat so McKelvey reaching the 28 end of the first quarter Foxworth passes his early tests and so we'll have much more for him it's seven to three Turks As we start the second quarter, look closely. Not everybody is shirtless. <laughs> and thank goodness for that. And Phil Dean will not let us tell us straight. <laughs> Bless her heart. Her mama, her mama <laughs> is going to see that. Zachary fighting on a second and two may have the first down yardage. Our ESPN2 game track through the first quarter. Sean Hill had a good start. Three out of four on the scoring drive and five out of 11 for the period. Number two, Mark Riley in the end zone with a lot of help from his friends, James Lynch. And what do you guys, 68 total yards so far. I'm sure he'll get a bunch more. Hansler rolling left and throwing complete and Matt Bailey. With some good fight after his catch. Extra yardage, about 15, 14, we'll call it for Bailey, and another first down. That's his first catch in four games. Senior from Stone Mountain, Georgia, has been missing. And again, that seems to be their bread and butter play. Get Woody on the corner. He's either going to run it, he has a quarterback draw, runs around the end, or he hits these guys that have been wide open in the flat. Clemson has had such terrific veteran receivers. 
In the last several years that they've had to go with some who have been career backups. Bailey, one of them. Let's go to Michelle. Well, Dave, Maryland defensive line coach Dave Salazzo was imploring his linemen to get pressure on Woody Dancer. He put it in these simple terms, Dave. You just have to go through the stands into the darn parking lot. I want to get there every time. Now, naturally, Dave, I substituted words to prevent our <laughs> listeners from having too much, you know, despair at home. And we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Well, we get the point. Look at this Four formation. Out, stacked up top. After the game by Rambert. And Dantzler keeping. I don't think he got back to the line of scrimmage. They've been pretty good about keeping somebody tracking Dantzler. And in this case, it's, again, E.J. Henderson. And tracking him, but also giving Woody nowhere to run on the outside. E.J. will come up. Woody's got no, he can't get to the outside. They're keeping contained. We talked about more of controlled rush. That's what Maryland has to do, so Woody can't get the corner on him. Five carries, only 19 yards so far for Dantzler, the all-time leading rushing quarterback in the ACC. They come with a corner blitz, runs away from it, and throws complete. Derek Hamilton to the 28-yard line, 24 yards. Woodrow Dantzler, magic didn't on I display. Just, didn't I just say, don't let him outside? Mike Whaley out of the end, the left end for Maryland. Let him outside. You can't let this man get on the corner. He is going to make something happen. And when you let him on the corner, his receivers know exactly what to do. Derek Hamilton made the great adjustment. Already owns all the freshman receiving records at Clemson. Down to the 23 on the first down carry. As Chad Jasmine plunges through the middle. You're going to call E.J. Henderson's name about every other play. He started today with 113 tackles. Second was Leon Joe with 63. And he's got five and counting already tonight. Great old Southern football term. Who's ever heard? On second and five, Zachary had some room. And just inside the 20s, we get an update on Florida and South Carolina. Turnovers have been a problem for the Gators, Dave. Back to receive the punt from South Carolina after rising up to stop them and gets away from Lito Shepard there. Benny Alexander tried to get on it, was set up a Derek Watson touchdown. Watson going in and South Carolina taking advantage of the miscue. It's 7 0 Gamecocks. We hope so, biggest game in their history. Ralph Regent said biggest home game here in at least 20 years. Both worth watching. Flag down as Dantzler kept it on third and one. That came in before the play started. It usually means defense offside. Prior to the snap, ball strike on the offense. Five yards, still third down. Usually that comes in before the play. Usually the whistle blows with a false start. Maybe they were blowing the whistle, but it should stop the play. Let's see if we can. Yeah, it's Ooh, very, boy, very boy. left side of the line yes. there. That's close. And here's what happens now. Ben Hall, number 87, is a freshman. He has not practiced all week. I talked to Brad Scott down on the field during warm-ups. He said, we're worried about Ben. He's going to try to play. And when you don't practice, you just lose a little bit of timing. So now third and six. That's what another quarterback draw fooling many tonight. Terps are all over it again. And Mike, you can see their plan for the quarterback draw is to pinch off the outside. After in that time, Whaley did not lose contain. Again, this was going to be a draw, so it wasn't a pass. He came on the inside, pinched down hard. He's coming right from the top up there, but he's going to pinch this time. Everybody's staying, keeping their responsibilities. So Aaron Hunt will try a 44-yarder. Seven out of nine for the year. He's made three from this distance or longer. Not much angle. Plenty of leg and plenty good. Aaron Hunt, all the Tiger points tonight. Sean Hill and Maryland scored the first time they got it. And that margin now, a thin one point. 
ESPN 2's presentation of primetime college football is brought to you by Universal Pictures and Beacon Pictures Spy Game. Robert Redford, Brad Pitt, Spy Game in theaters November 21st. And by Zima, clearly refreshing. Mike, that's called a library. It's a building with a lot of books. Most college students spend a lot of time there. And you're insinuating what, Dave? I used to go to the Notre Dame Library all the time. They used to have the papers from my hometown of Cleveland, Ohio. I'd go read them. <laughs> they have good-looking girls there. Well, I can say anything. Didn't uh, have a I was studying. terrapin statue in front of it. No, there. no, they did not. Lazera with a high kick down to the seven. Bruce Perry has had a quiet night so far. Not much on the return. You know, you look back at the latter era of Ralph Friedgen as the Georgia Tech offensive coordinator. The last three years he's spent in that job and what he's done in his first year here. And there's no other word other than eerie. I mean, that is consistency bordering on the unbelievable. Same amount of points, almost exactly the same amount of total yards per game. So it's a system that has worked everywhere he's been. He says, why shouldn't I be a successful head coach? I've been as successful as any offensive assistant in the country. Why should anything change? And nothing has. Chad Killian on his first carry for a couple. And a guy at age 54 who waited as long as he did. Left here 1969 as a player. Came back twice as an assistant coach. The last two times they hired a head coach, never even called it. Never even thought about giving Ralph Friedgen an interview. Well, the AD here, Debbie Out, realized this time when it came open, she had only one call to make. And the day after last year's Georgia Tech Georgia game, they met, and three days later, he was introduced to in College Park. Johnson breaking on that and almost got a pick. Would have been six, and instead we'll see a flag. They're going to call him his right hand, they said, is going to, and this is always what happens when you get this interference, or 99% of the time, the block hand gets there, it's the off hand that comes and makes contact. A lot of time they want to have that off hand there just in case Pass the receiver catches it. On the defense, spot foul and make first down. They feel like they have to have a hand have a hand on them to make the tackle in case they catch it. Watch his right hand, left hand block, right hand was draped around him. Well, I don't know, I don't know how much it was draped around, but that that's the call, it's always the off hand that's going to get you in trouble. Or get it. Bill, oh, I don't see any interference no, at you all. You know what? That, that, it, it certainly was, was not enough to throw the flag. That is a piddling call. The I right agree. hand barely yep. touched. And the rule says you can't engage him with that right hand and impede him. That didn't happen there. Maryland will call timeout. Nine minutes and 42 seconds to go. Johnson's been on the receiving end of a couple tough calls tonight. After their timeout, now ready to go from their 20. Maryland, first and 10, leading 7-6. to six. And Riley getting more work than even Bruce Perry so far tonight. That's good for seven yards. And we look in on Stanford and Arizona again. Reese Davis. All right, David, Chris Lewis going back to work. You know, we've seen him go to the 6-7 tail Johnson all night. You don't want to leave out the little guy. There's always 5'8", Luke Powell. He's scoring on Arizona. Stanford up 17 to 10, and the ball coach put together a drive. Got a field goal out of it. Florida down to South Carolina by four. Second and two. And again, Riley. Ran over the umpire on his way to 11 yards. They are running right up the gut of the big man, the anchor of that offensive line, Melvin Fowler. We talked about him, the man in the chess club, snapping that ball, going out, blocking linebackers, walling him off. That's a great job. His dad told me he wanted to play baseball in ninth grade. His dad said, you're not playing baseball. You're playing lacrosse. It was an all, all, all Long Island lacrosse player. Said it was better for his feet to help him in football. Something worked. First and 10, third time in a row. Riley for a couple. And you just can't imagine how difficult it is to start 43 times in a row because that means you've played a bunch of times when you didn't feel like it. And you told me a great thing, Bill. A lot of people said when you're in the center, you're at a disadvantage because you have to snap the ball. And you said, and I, and I agree with you, no, 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 it's an advantage. You're a half count ahead of everybody else. If you can have a great first step, which Fowler has, you can gain an advantage because you can snap it and step at the same time. Precisely. Second down and eight. 
And the fullback, James Lynch. Maryland convinced they can just pound the Clemson middle on this drive. That's all they've done. Now, this is actually a triple option. Fowler has a tough block. He has to reach on side. The fullback runs outside, and he gets run over. Almost an impossible block on a big guy like Javon Bush. And there are Mr. and Mrs. Melvin Fowler Sr. up there with their 67 zone. Mom's got the binoculars fixed on her son. She's not going to miss a snap. And Wheatley Heights, New York. Hill going deep for Gary. Got it inside the 25. Now, I've got to tell you, the pace of practice, and Mike, you and I have talked a lot about yep. this. Ralph Friedgen pace in practice is exactly like this on Thursday. I was there. They practice like this even on Thursday with backs being required to beat the defenders with defenders close and catching balls over outstretched hands like that every day, all day. 33 yards. Watson victimized again. The option pitch. And back to work goes Mark Riley, senior from Corum, New York. Out of bounds at the 20. And you, you showed the stats of what he did at Georgia Tech uh, to here in Maryland. And a lot of that, we talk about the practice tempo. They run a ton of offensive plays in practice. As Coach Friedgen says, we don't coach in between plays. We spend all that money on video equipment. We're going to use the film after the practice. And Coach, watch them when they break the huddle. They're going to get to the line, usually with 18 to 20 seconds left on the play clock, as you see, because Sean Hill, if it's a running play, has got to call it at the line of scrimmage. They want to get there, take their time, check it out, call the play. It is a running play. Hold there for Riley to the 15. He's close to the first down, probably a couple of feet short. When they work on their option, they have a drill. In six minutes, they have two half lines going alternately. They'll run 26 plays in six minutes' time. That's why these guys know what to do. And that's uh, the ACC's leading rusher, sophomore Bruce Perry, watching senior Mark Riley carry the load on this drive. Perry was the top running back in the country for three weeks and has slacked off in the last three games as defenses have ganged up on him. And the third and short Hill with the sneak, and he should have it. Uh-oh, I think I have a guess coming up. That is the proper way to run a quarterback yes. sneak. You get those pads down when you're the QB, and you get in behind those big linemen, those big rear ends, and you keep your feet moving, keep the pads square. Nice job. Okay, Michael, tell us. Is it a first down, or I, is it ain't? Is it ain't? Or is it whatever? I'm going to say he has it by two inches. Please let him. The man it. says he has it by two inches. I've got four inches. Swami Golik. Please let him have it. That's about four oh, inches. Oh, good call, Dave. Oh, right. How about you? That away, David. All right. But, but Not just, too bad, Michael. You, you were very close. Just for the record, we were both right. Okay. I knew you'd point that out. Wow. So, first down, 627 and a half. Maryland scored on their opening possession, took it 80 yards, nothing since. And they rolled up 175 total yards. Still in the eye, still working widely through the middle. And Vaughn again, and uh, probably the best defender Clemson has had, at least up front, his third stop. Nothing fancy in this drive, save for the long pass. It's been a lot of smash mouth football right up front. Clemson finally stopping a, for a short run on a first down. Now, the fact that Clemson is also used to a quick pace, should that affect their defense less against a team like Maryland? And it should some defenses. Yeah, absolutely. I think they're not already accustomed to. Run blitz, Riley. Inside the 10, dragging Eric Meekins down to Michelle. Dave, another factor behind Mar Maryland's remarkable turnaround is what we can attribute to Ralph's rules. A list of rules that he has instituted, which include a strict 10.30 p.m. curfew, no alcohol consumption during the season, mandatory on-campus housing, and center Melvin Fowler put it well. He said, we may not show it, but we know this is exactly what we need. I'm thrilled about it. It's all worked. Anything that man has tried this year has worked. Maybe okay, the fourth quarter against Florida State. Third and five. Looking to the end zone. 
keeping and sacked at the 12. And the Tiger defense coming up again with a big stop. Bryant McNeil and Khalid Vaughn, both defensive ends this time. Great job by Clemson. Maryland tried to flood the zone with three receivers and cross one of them. Clemson did a great job just letting Maryland do everything right in front of them. Had the coverage, and then Hill had nowhere to go. Nice job of zone coverage. Nobody home to throw to. Defenders laying back just like you described, Mike. Nick Novak for 29 yards. And ever since he tied and then won an overtime the Georgia Tech game, Novak has been a folk hero here on campus. He's also made nine of his last ten. Maryland upping its lead to 10 to 6. And again, if you have not heard the surprising result, out of Tallahassee tonight, Florida State losing their first home ACC game ever. They were 39 and 0, and they got knocked off by NC State, 34-28. Maryland, if they win tonight and win at NC State next week, they're the ACC champs. They control it all from here on out. It's a big dose of help from the Wolfpack. Mance's return with a flag down to the 19-yard line. Flag come flying in from the side. Usually against the return team. That's exactly what it is. Back them up. It's a night where Dominique Foxworth had his red shirt taken off. His first action ever. True freshman, Randallstown, Maryland. More than up to the challenge. Watch the hand play. Great job with the hands. Feeling where the players are with his hands. Look at that. That's just, that's natural instinct right there. And for a freshman, that, that is incredible right now. And just a couple of weeks ago, Foxworth was, at best, fourth on the depth chart because they had Tony O'Conlawan, the ACC's leading interception man. Five interceptions. He is out with uh, an undisclosed illness, and they're not sure if he will see any more action. Denard Wilson started from last week. He's got a hamstring. He's not playing this week. So Dominique Foxworth getting his chance. Taking advantage so far. Rambert with the carry and another E.J. Henderson stop. He's everywhere. Sideline to sideline. The proper pronunciation of that football term is everywhere. I'm sorry. Ever Inside. Warm. The guy's 240 pounds and he runs like he, he, he looks like he's 210. A roll by Densley looking. Henderson's got a beat on him. He just does throw it away in time. Rod Littles from a safety blitz also was close. Back to Reese. Dave, remember I talked about that Stanford could also go to the short receiver. Well, it's okay to go back to the tall guy, too. Up on Arizona, 17-10. Throw it up to 6-7, Teo Johnson. Another touchdown for Teo. It's 24-10. South Carolina has added a field goal. They're up by a touch on the game. Third and eight. For a Tiger team, it's 49% on the year. One of the top... Numbers in the country, just two out of five tonight. Dantzler firing complete, but it's going to be well short of the first down to McKelvey. And guess who's right there on it? Can't do that. You can't run that route on third and eight. You can't run it six, seven yards. You can't do it. It's a huge, huge break here now for Maryland. They're going to get, they should get very good field position out of this. You need eight yards. Run nine and come back one if you have to. Foxworth, nice bump. Got to get to the sticks on that. Have to. Two yards short. Lynn Cops standing at his two. And we walk on to Georgia from Athens, Georgia. Tommy Bowden very happy to bring him into the Tiger program. And a fair catch by Gary, 41 yarder. Tomorrow, the women's college basketball season gets underway as Planet Pearson and number seven Texas Tech face Elena Beard and the number four ranked Duke Blue Devils at one Eastern on ESPN. Then switch over to ESPN 2 at 3.30 as Sharika Wright and number nine Purdue play Stacey Dales and fifth ranked Oklahoma. It's the State Farm Tip Off Classic only on ESPN and ESPN 2. Who won the national championship last year in women's college basketball, Dave? That would be your fighting yes, Irish of Notre yes Dame. It would. Yes, and it Bruce would. Riley. Sean Hill hanging one deep for Jafar Williams on target. 
they beat Kevin Johnson again. What a long first half it's been for Johnson and a long 29-yard strike from Hill to Williams. I think the most difficult pass to defend in all of football is the play action off the option. The quarterback's down the line. Nobody suspects that there's going to be a post corner away from the option. Johnson in reasonably good position, but the throw is just perfect. That's execution. That's Frigian execution. Nice job. Great catch. First down, option. Perry back in. Now a tailback. And about an eight-yard scamper to the 22. And Mike, that time they came down the line with exactly the same option action as the play action pass, only this time they ran the option. Well, when you, and you're successful with the plays, you can mix it up just like that. What you're going to do is you're going to keep a defense which wants to be an attacking defense on their heels a little bit. Talked about Kevin Johnson's long first half, far from the biggest problem he's faced this year. His yeah. uncle, who basically raised him like a father, recently passed away with a stroke. His uh, aunt, who was like a mother to him, passed away last year. He's had lots to deal with. Bruce Perry, first down right, to the 16. They're not booing, they're brucing. <laughs> yep. When Bruce carries the ball, that's what you get, that Bruce. Ralph Regan said we had to teach him how to run. This was a guy who a year ago was a failed experiment as a cornerback. They redshirted him. Beginning of the year, the best they'd say about him was, well, he should be in the mix somewhere at tailback, and he's been one of the best in the country. And it really comes down to their teaching him when you make your moves and when you go straight at the line. A little more on the development of Bruce Perry after a Clemson timeout. 201 and a half. Back after the timeout, 10 6, first down and 10. And from the 16 yard line, Maryland staying in the eye with Lynch and Perry. Here's Perry. Not much on that one, but really they look at the development of Perry as a great example of a guy who had ability and needed to be coached into getting the most out of that ability. He said, I just needed to learn when to make the cuts and how to feel things. And Coach Friedgen and the coaching staff, Charlie Taft, the offensive coordinator, worked with me, and he said, now I got a good feel for and I like to run between those tackles. And he doesn't look like a big guy, but he runs like a big man. Only their 5,000-yard rusher, only West Virginia recruited him as a running guy. And whistles as Hill starts the option. So a lot of stories like that. Hill is another one. Nobody in the country nope. had any idea how effective he would be at this level as a starting quarterback. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense, five yards. Repeat second down. So you come in with a couple of unknowns in Hill and Perry. I mean, they were they were ready to go with a three-headed monster running back uh, at the beginning of the season. Then Perry got an opportunity and took the job. But Hill the same way. Not sure what they were going to get. So second and thirteen. From the twenty, one twenty and a half. They are coming with everything. Hill gets it up. Coming into the middle is Gary near the 10. Good example of why Sean Hill has been so effective. Yes, and a good example of why Coach Herring said we really can't take many chances against these guys. They brought everybody that time, got caught in man coverage, and gave up a fairly big game down this close to the goal line. Here come both backers on the inside, pressure from the outside. That's not what you want to see with this kind of route call. And the linemen out in front, they're yep. getting out quickly. That's Todd White getting a block and Melvin Fowler out there as well. Hayfley uh, had to make the tackle, the free safety. Perfect ca play call yes. for the defense that was coming. Fourth catch, 83 yards by Gary. And Reese, what do you have for us at halftime? Well, at halftime, they will tell you why, if possible, Chuck Amato's chest is sticking out even farther. We'll see if anybody can emerge from the day with just one conference loss in the Pac-10. And Auburn might have to start paying property taxes on Sanford Stadium in Athens, Georgia, because they own that place. Mark May and I will talk about it all at the half in just a few. All right. 
Tommy Bowden's uh, dad took his uh, first ever ACC home loss today. Florida State drops to five and two. If Maryland wins, are six and one with one game left. Florida State six and three. Georgia Tech also surprised by Virginia today. They're three and three in the league, six and three overall. So it is all lined up just the way the Terrapins would have dreamed it would be. Well, my son, Bill Curry Jr., and my daughter, Kristen Hunter, are going to be all over me because they're both UVA grads, and I'm one of those Yellow Jackets, and they will give me fits over that one today. Tough family stuff. Third and four. Leading to get just outside the six for a first down with 101 and a half, leading 10-6. Hill, plenty of time. Looks to the end zone. Touchdown, Julian Gary. Kevin Johnson certainly having a difficult half, guys. He was... Back too deep in the end zone. I didn't see if he slipped or not, but nowhere near Gary. Easy pitch and catch for the touchdown. Fourth touchdown catch of the year for Gary. Novak makes it 17 to 6. This is a simple little crossing route, not a not untypical. Oh man, just good yep. move. He just left Johnson's jock in the back of the end zone and there's hill has been standing strong in that pocket he's had some time tonight rarely been touched able to drill it in after the great move by gary wow i didn't see that cut oh. he just separated reggie herring said really this is the first time in his eight years at clemson he's felt like they had to start from scratch putting this defense together and he said this is a year that will live infamously this will live in infamy yeah. in my life, is what he said. It's the first time I've ever had to raise a defense. But Kevin Johnson is a sophomore, and he's one of the old heads back there. They play at times they have six freshmen in the defensive lineup. And, and, and while we say that he's had a tough half, there were two interference calls that we all up here think were were, were bad, flat out bad calls. Shouldn't have been as tough as it's been. Yeah, exactly. Right there, he, he uh, left a piece of his equipment yes, in the end did. zone, and it's happened to all of us. Well, this is a good first half Boy, team. Boy. Not bad in the second half. And ready to kick off with 56 seconds. Before halftime, Novak now handling all the people. And this one will not the return by Hamilton. Now to Michelle. Well, Dave, talking about Julian Gary, what makes his accomplishments even more remarkable? A week before the season opener against North Carolina, he suffered a spinal injury in practice. He actually had to be airlifted from the practice field to the hospital, and his football future was completely up in the air, but he recovered quickly, surprised everybody by playing in that North Carolina game, and he continues to surprise. You guys remember Gary Collins, don't yes. you? Not the talk show. Host. No. The Browns wide receiver. He was the last Terrapin to lead three straight years in receiving. Gary's going to do it this year. Over the middle for Aries Curry, freshman from Columbia. And another prize recruit. That's 20 yards. Aries has the kind of speed that can go the distance if he gets a little crease. Ensler hurries into the line. Clock rolling 45 seconds. Intended for Zachary, who took his eyes off. Tigers have two timeouts and 39 seconds. The guys up front for Clemson are doing a nice job of pass blocking. Very good job. These three guys in the middle are brilliant seniors. T.J. Watkins, Kyle Young, Will Merritt. Good jobs by the tackles as well. Actually, they're not seniors. They're all graduates. <laughs> Maryland has 33 sacks this year. Not getting near Woody at this point. Safety blitz is picked up nicely. Now Dantzler. Not many quarterbacks would have gotten anything <laughs> at all out of that. Duran Roundtree has it. Well, it would have been a six-yard loss for most as a three-yard gain. God says get rid of it. 
stop the clock somehow. They're going to have to stop it here by using their second timeout. And that man right there, Duran Roundtree, number 71, believe it or not, has broken Randy White's strength records in the strength program here at Maryland. Randy White, the great Dallas Cowboy All-Pro for many years, still held records until Duran got a hold. Look at those arms. He he has a problem. Sometimes he gets up and he puts those down his pants legs because it looks like legs. 490 bench, 760 squat, and a 35-inch vertical leap. <laughs> He's all man. Boy, I tell you, these athletes today are Wouldn't it be great to be able oh, to do those I things. sold them short an inch and a half on the vertical leap. You can get a dollar bill under my feet on a vertical leap. I was about to say, what was your best, Mike? Well, let me just tell you, I intercepted a ball on Troy Aikman one time. He dove at my ankles as I had a clear shot for the end zone. He was laying prone on the ground, and I tripped over him as I tried to jump. <laughs> so how thick is a human being? How many inches up? I didn't make it over the top of I don't think I would tell that anymore. <laughs> But I did have football uniform on, so that, you know, weighted me down a little bit. <laughs> Maryland defense has been tough on third down. Benson used to converting about half of those. Going deep against Foxwood, and again he makes the play against Crosby. There's a flag. Flag is way back at the line of scrimmage. It is not on anything Foxworth did. You know, this this nickname's been taken, but it pops into mind. Dominique, the human highlight film. He practically has been tonight. Illegal man downfield for Clemson, but boy, what can what do you say about this kid? True freshman, again, staying stride for stride. Watch his hand. Watch him put his hands out. He does a nice job of playing out with his hands. Goes up, trying to get the ball at its highest point. Well, that's great coverage. I haven't done any damage yet on Dominique Foxworth in his first college performance. So win cop with 25 seconds. Julian Gary back. Maryland. Now this guy cop and his dad have studied the details of punting and hang time and made it a scientific thing. They've actually put together a book, so we're going to check him out on his hang time on this punt. You think you want to read that book, by the way? It's uh, a description of every punt in the NFL last year. A little bit dry reading, I'm guessing. Well, very informational, very analytical, I'm sure. They're selling it to the NFL teams for 155 bucks. Well, what can the Bears do for an encore after two overtime defensive touchdowns in two weeks? Is Ryan Lee facing his last chance at age 25? Is Michael Strahan about to obliterate Mark Gastineau's single-season sack record? Chris Berman with all the answers with the group at 11 a.m. Eastern tomorrow, Sunday NFL Countdown. Going to see a couple of good tests for teams that are surprising this year. The Bears get a test against the Packers, and the Chargers, who have been a surprise, get a test at Denver. Or Denver and then Oakland two weeks in a row. We'll check out when Cop with the hang time. 25 seconds. And just calling his last time out. Bad bounce. It'll be dead at the 34. Have to go back and reread some of the book. <laughs> yep, what we really want. That's just 23 yards. Julian Gary has been the just about all the Maryland passing game. Five catches, 93 yards. Kevin Johnson, the victim most of the time, and this oh. for the touchdown. Said second play, nice move, nice arm over on Kevin Johnson. Good move to get off the line of scrimmage. Yeah, the guy is slick. Back to that hang time. We want, we want five seconds, ideally. That's awesome. Bill. With Perry uncovered and gets out of bounds at the 45 with nine seconds left. And you're back there in your territory and you figure, okay, they'll run the clock out. Not with Ralph Fregion and Charlie Taft. Here they come down the field with a safe pass. Perry is wide open against the deep zone and he gets the ball out of zone, out, out of bounds and they're down here with a chance to hit an out cut or a little seam, call a timeout, kick a field goal. It was odd they used their last time out before the punt. They'll get it out somehow. And he'll fire for Gary overthrows in five seconds. 
And now, pretty much, you have to take your shot at the end zone. Oh, they don't oh. have any timeouts left, do they? At there you they, go. They call the last one. Now they're going to get you go. back out, and he'll try a 62-yarder. That's what This I'm is with about. the wind. This is with, there is a fairly good breeze down on the field. His best is 51 yards. Get the rush in the middle, because it's got to come out low. You want to rush right up the gut on him. Bernard the hold. Good snap and hold. Doesn't have enough, not quite. Got it close, though. And the only two he's missed since being the hero against Georgia Tech, he had a 50-yarder off the middle of the right upright. That may be why they figured he had enough leg to try a 62-yarder. Dantzler held it just 115 yards, and Hill has 177 through the air. Advantage Hill, advantage Maryland, 17-6 as we return you to Reese Davis. Mark Riley, quite 149 yards in the first half, but plowing in for a touchdown there as the Turks trying to clinch a share of the ACC on top of Clemson. Fourth largest crowd, Bird Stadium's history. Their biggest in 18 years, and have they enjoyed what they've seen so far? 17-6, Dave Barnett, Bill Curry, and Mike Golick. This is the same Maryland team that lost 35-14 at Clemson last year. And if we hadn't seen it ourselves, we wouldn't believe it. It's mostly the same players. It is mostly the same players, but they have a different kind of organization and a different kind of intent. I'm so impressed with the way they take advantage of everything that Clemson gives them to try. No turnovers by either team, a well-played game. Clemson's got an eight-game streak on this Maryland team, and Clemson needs to get into some kind of a rhythm right now, and that rhythm includes Woody Danzler doing a little more than he's doing right now, only 18 yards rushing. Give Maryland credit, pinching from the outside, not letting them get the corner. Dominique Foxworth in his first start. Three tackles, two pass breakups. Marvelous first performance. And Sean Hill outplaying Dantzler with 177 yards and that touchdown to Julian Gary, who had five catches for 93 yards in his big first half. Novak kicking it deep to Mance to get the second half underway. Mance from the two, hemmed in all the way. And Michelle Tafoya, earlier chance to visit with Ralph Regan. With Ralph Regan, normally a very balanced offensive attack. Your passing yardage, though, far above your rushing yardage right now, which is unusual. Does that concern you at all? Well, they're putting the eight and nine people in the box. They're forcing us to pass. So, you know, we got to be able to take what they give us. That's, that's why we're throwing it. We're not worried about our running game. We get a good opportunity to run the ball, we're going to run it. Speaking of good opportunities, you heard right before kick that Florida State lost. Did that come up at halftime at all? I told him before the game we knew the situation. We got to go out and win this game. That's what we got to do. All our dreams, everything is tied into this game. Ralph Regan, thank you. Thank you. And Zachary with short yardage on first down. And speaking of dreams, we asked Ralph yesterday if he, in his wildest dreams, thought that his first year could go this well. He said, well, yeah, in my wildest dreams. <laughs> Good answer. I bet in his wildest dreams they'd have been undefeated. Well, except for the fourth quarter against Florida State getting away from him, it might well be. Delivered over the middle. And Zachary at the 29-yard line. Let's go again down to Michelle. Well, Dave, Tommy Bowden told me at halftime that his biggest concern coming into the second half is what they do in the red zone. He said they've been blitzing us. We haven't been picking up those blitzes or making the right calls. We've had to settle for field goals. We need to score touchdowns. Maryland's offense is too good. Chad Jasmine, the fullback, on third and one to the 43-yard line. 14 yards. As good as the Clemson running game has looked all night. And the reason is because Akil Smith, number 61, and the rest of the big guys, Morgan Woodward, number 83, the tight end, got their job done, got their pads down, and created a nice crease. Short yardage football. Tiger offense never really seemed to get a rhythm in the first half. Good start to this drive, and again, big room through the middle. Zachary to the 35. It took Tony Jackson and Karome Cox in the secondary to get him down, but that's 22 yards. Again, we look at the O-line of Clemson. Tommy Bowden has never had a, over a 300-pounder, except for this year, Gary Bird, a little over 300 pounds. So they do, and they have to be technically sound to be on the smallest side in the O-line. They're getting the corners, they're getting their blocks open in the holes. 
The little bitty guy is 290. Yeah, that's something. That's the Lots of time now chased by Roundtree throwing it away. <laughs> One of the rare mental mistakes by Woody Dantzler. He had plenty of time. His pocket was secure. All he had to do was stand there, and the defensive backs can't cover his people forever. He bolted and gave up an opportunity for a completion. But you won't see him make many mistakes. Well, I tell you, when he gets on that corner, you have to hold your breath, either running or throwing, opportunity to make a big play when he's free. Again, Jasmine. They might need to work him a little more. Wow. I like Jasmine. I like his name, Chad Jasmine. That just sounds like something nice in the South. Hard running fullback. This is Clemson smash mouth football yep. right up the gut. <laughs> See now, that whole lot out of them. No, no, neither Tommy nor Bobby Bowden will line up and, and go into a season without having a no line and a fullback that'll get after you, and that's what they're doing right now. They've got him seven yards there, looking at third and three. Another good to Zachary Nelser can't oh. get away from E.J. Henderson. Guess who? Oh, boy. He just is so instinctual, has a knack for the ball. As the coaches say, we put our players in position to make plays, but you have to carry it out and make them. He's a guy that makes it. Reads, reacts, fills. Again, nobody on him, nobody hitting him, but he finishes the play. Terrible mistake Absolutely. by the Clemson offense. It looked like the lead back. Rembert. Bernard Rembert blocked yep. the wrong guy. You don't leave that one clean, that's for sure. Run on for a 46-yarder. And a fake keeping close to the first down is the holder, Jeff Scott. He's the son of Brad Scott, the offensive coordinator. Oh, boy. It depends on the mark. Randall Jones, number 12, the free safety, did a great job to stop Jeff Scott short of the first down marker. He's the son of Brad. Brad there to the right. Michael Kane to the left, the quarterback coach. Like the call, though, down there? Boy, I tell you I what. I like it a lot. Yeah, I, I don't mind this at all. Now, you wonder, do you sell it a little more, coach? I mean, it was awfully quick. Do you sell it and let Maryland come into their block a little more? He just popped it down and went. I don't know. Well, you know, half yard short. I, don't, I can't answer your question, but I, I think it was a risk worth taking. I agree. I mean, another half a yard, and we're saying what a great yep. call it was. <laughs> Well, referee Joseph Ryder with the question over there. About which we'll find out. Sideline warning on the Clemson bench. This is their first warning. You got to get after that get back coach, Bill. Doesn't everybody have a get back coach? Yep, you get the strength coach over yep. there, and he's the get back coach, and he runs up and down the sideline all night shouting, what, Mike? Get back. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That is exactly what, exactly what we what all they do. do. Every head coach does that, so they will get on the get-back coach, and, of course, he doesn't do any good with Reggie. Let's get back to the ground game and Bruce Perry. Now, having said that we agree with the call by the Clemson coaches to go for it, that's a big emotional boost here early in the third quarter for the Maryland team, as if they need another emotional boost. Well, we always talk about how important the first drives of the third quarter are. Clemson trailing 17-6. Would have liked to come away with some points, but I, I still don't have a problem with that fake at all. I think it was a good, good play. Good call. Well, this time is the option pitch to Perry on second and nine, and a nice tackle by Carson which will come up short of the first down. Let's look in on Washington State and Arizona State. Reese Day. Nate Washington State making a play on defense. Andrew Walter, the Sun Devil quarterback, is going to get flushed a little bit and looks as if his knees might be down, but they rule this a fumble and heads up right now. Smith picks it up, goes and scores. Washington State on top, 21 to nine. This will be third. And a little less than a yard. Back and forth, Bernie Fiddler. And the short yarded specialist, Mark Riley, 
Who has a touchdown tonight. Very close to the first down this time. Oh, wow, the, Bernie, Bernie Fiddler looked like a whirling dervish. I mean, what was that? When they're running in where they're placing, it looks like he has it. Going back to the Arizona State game, I congratulate my, uh, my comrade in the NFL tonight, Mark Malone. He's going into the Arizona State Hall of Fame. Ah, very well deserved. Sunday of Devil and many years in the NFL, mostly with the Pittsburgh Steelers. This weekend, he gets inducted into that college's Hall of Fame. Well, close enough for the measurement. He's got it. He's got it by, I'm going to say, a good six, seven inches, Dave. Jovan Bush, number 95, just limped off the field, but he made a big play there to make it close. Oh. By how much, Mike? Six or seven inches from the back nose of the ball, I meant. Yes. To the chain. I think you had some terminological inexactitude. Jovan's got something to say to even the kids Boy. down there Boy, on I the you. sideline. <laughs> Holy Jovan cow. Jovan is a highly emotional tonight, and that's what you want. You want your D-lineman like that. You want them ready, staying ready. So by that margin, first down, 36-yard line. <laughs> Hill now ready to go over the middle, and we'll get another flag. The ball intended for Rich Parson, yep. and they're going to call it on Ronnie Delusime, redshirt freshman safety. Good call. And that that was pass interference. We've, had, we've yep. had some problems with a couple of other calls of interference. That was clearly hit him before the ball got there. Very simple rule. You can't hit the guy before the ball arrives. You have to be, arrive simultaneous with the ball or after the pass arrival of the ball. On the defense, 15 yards, automatic first down. Yep. It was close, but he clearly hit him before the ball got there. A little better timing would have been a great play. So the Lusume, unlike Kevin Johnson the first half, at least getting his money's worth. <laughs> Back to the bench. First and 10, 49 of the Tigers. Here with Keith. They've been something to see. Sean Hill outplaying. Both the passing and running game. Much more celebrated. Woody Dantzler tonight. That's down to the 42. This is true triple option. The quarterback is going to read this man. If he steps out, which he does, he's going to hand it to the fullback or pull it and run. It looked to me like that would have been a hand read. In other words, hand it to the fullback. But it is a triple option. And seven yards. Option the other way. And stood up by Charles Hafley. It looks like to me that Sean, ha Sean Hill is struggling a little bit with his triple option reads right now. I thought he made an incorrect read on the first one, and that time he wanted to pitch the ball, but it didn't have it secure in his hand. And I'll tell you another reason he couldn't pitch it after he, he couldn't get it to him is John Lee came up and just tackled Bruce Perry, who was going to be the pitch man. He took care of his responsibility. He just hit him behind the line. And that is legal. For Hill tonight, eight carries, 20 yards. Here's third and two with two tight ends. Looking at Matt Murphy. And play action. Chased by Vaughn, got it off, and a crowd and incomplete intended for Matt Murphy. So the Tiger defense, another stop on a third down. Uh, you know what? You need a few yards for the first down. He had James Lynch and Jeff Dugan both a little bit past the sticks. I think he tried to bite off a little more than he could chew there going downfield. Should have just gone for the safer pass, move the sticks, keep possession. Brooks Bernard. With that 45 yard average, fourth in the country, He's led the ACC all year. And an expert at placing inside the 20. This is going to be. Uh, at the 12 and recovered by Joe Don Reams. Wow. Real close to disaster there. Reams falling on his own muff. Hugo Dantzler is going to have to start at his 12-yard line, but at least it's still Clemson's possession. 8-24 in the third. Fourth largest crowd in the history of Bird Stadium, 52,462. That's about 4,000 above the listed capacity. Some having more fun than others. Yeah, that little fella's kicking tigers. <laughs> and from the 12 dance, they're still with it. 
And the 10th tackle of the night. Fourth for a loss by E.J. Henderson. He just broke Randy White's 27-year-old record, his 25th tackle for a loss of the year. Keep him penned in and then bring the pressure up the middle. That's what you want to do. 42, E.J. Henderson, you, great job by the contained guys. You see him even slowing up a little on the outside so he doesn't get outside, and E.J. comes right up the gut. Boy, is he a player. Loss of seven. There's Randy White marks. All of them still in the books. Not that one anymore. Travis Zachary near the 10 down to Michelle. Dave, after Maryland stopped Clemson's last drive, D-line coach Dave Salazzo said again and again, that's the stop we needed. But defensive coordinator Gary Blackney came over to the line to remind them, we got to get our pads down. They're blowing us off the line. Salazzo agreed, asking, are we being tentative? Trust your fundamentals, Dave. Been pretty good advice all year. Here's third and ten. And down to that enclosed end of the field, it is noisy. Dantzler hit as he underthrows, and it's intercepted. Cox bringing it up the sideline. Marked out of bounds with a flag down at the two. Fundamental football. Just what Michelle said the coaches were talking about. That's what they had again. Pressure on the outside. Don't let Danzel go outside. Bring it up the gut then. Get in his face. Leon Joe got in his face. Force the underthrow. We'll see what the flag's about. That's fundamental football by the defensive side of the ball for Maryland. Gary Blackney, the veteran coach, formerly the head coach at Bowling Green, is the architect of this outstanding defense. They have been weak against the pass this year but they've done a marvelous job tonight of mixing and picking their times here's the call let's see what it is you're right too bill dead last they've been against the pass in the acc giving up 239 yards a game well that indications offsetting penalties from joseph Ryder. he'll explain blocking the back during the return on the defense, 10 yards. Dead ball, personal foul on the defense. Half a distance to the goal, first down. Now he said defense twice. And the reason is because there was a change of possession on the ball. But watch Leon Joe come up the pipe. It's the same stunt we showed you earlier. And Clemson hasn't solved it yet. And it forces the short throw. Under throw, looks like a punt. Cox gets underneath it, doesn't fair catch it by any means, and makes the run down the sideline. But that is how a defensive <laughs> line coach is supposed to look. I wish you could hear his voice. And speaking of staying low, he had his guys in the shoots on Thursday, Mike. It was the Golic shoot drill. Stay low. Low man wins. How many times we've heard that in oh, our gee. lives, Bill? Every day. So Cox, after his 34-yard return, sees it marked back to the 10. Maryland has scored every time they've been in the red zone tonight. And they'll start with 6.51 to go in the third, already up by 11. They're keeping on the option. Or maybe a yard hit by Rodney Thomas. Florida, South Carolina, what's happening in Columbia Reach? Well, the Tigers certainly aren't the only team having trouble from the state of South Carolina. The Gators on the Gamecocks end of the field, and Rex Grossman finding with Shea Caldwell. Grossman 15 to 24, buck 73, couple of touches. Florida's up by 17. Ball coach has him pitching it around. Boy, I'll tell you what. what else they, is new? When they start rolling it, that offense is something else. And that Florida defense. I was about to say, the too. defense yep. this year is about as good. Mm -hmm. Only a yard on first down. Out of the shotgun, Perry, and maybe a yard. Bruce Perry held pretty well in check tonight. Tenth carry, only 35 yards. If they seem conservative down here, and you think, well, this is not really Phrygian football, this field goal is crucial because yep. it would give them a 14-point lead, forcing a two-touchdown necessity to catch it. And with three wideouts. And he'll 
the center. Motion by Matt Murphy. Hill hurried. Getting away. Oh, the long hurry. Touchdown. Perry gets the six. Hill ought to get the credit. What an escape. That, that was the play. I mean, you a quarterback holding on to the ball that long, only good's going to happen for the offense. The defense eventually comes off to try and get at Hill, and you leave a man wide open. It was Perry, the recipient that time. And they had it. They had yep. Sean Hill. Then all of a sudden, they didn't. And Novak has it up to 24-6. Maryland. Sean Hill showing his elusiveness. We've talked about Dantzler. Watch this fancy footwork, leaving people on the ground in his wake, in his wake a perfect throw. Wish had a beat on him. All of a sudden, he looked up. There was Perry celebrating a 24-6 turp lead. Maryland actually has one of the proudest histories of football in the ACC, 1953 National Championship year. They've had three great eras under Jim Tatum in the 50s, Jerry Claiborne in the 70s, and Bobby Ross in the 80s, but it ended with that 85 ACC Championship, their third straight. And since 85, they have not even finished in the top three until this year. Hamilton on the return, and it's a good one. All the way to the 39, chased down there by Tony Jackson, a 36-yard return to set up Clemson, now trailing 24-6. to And Woody Dantzler has been held more in check tonight by the Maryland defense than anybody else on the road all year. And with these players on Maryland, last year in the game, Woody Dantzler had 273 total yards. The year before, 435 total yards. So this Maryland defense doing a nice job, 132 non-lethal yards against them tonight. That's a good way to say it. They've really not been effective. Start with a give out of the gun to Bernard Rambert, the junior from Somerville, South Carolina, who got his first career start last week. Played well, 67 yards, only 11 carries. And Dave Salazzo, the defensive line coach for Maryland, was correct. The big guys on his side of the ball had their pads up, and they were getting knocked back by Clemson early in the third quarter. Not so now. Those knees are bent, those pads are down, and they're stuffing people. Here they come. Safety blitz on second down and eight over the middle, and incomplete intended for Aries Curry. Curry's got to look quicker. He's got to know the blitz is coming. He's got to look knowing that ball is going to come out of there. There's Gary Blackney. Highly respected defensive coordinator, been in the business a long time, and he's the man who's put this defensive plan together to match Ralph Frugin and Charlie Taft's offensive plan. Mike's coordinator again. He was a head coach for 10 years at Bowling Green. Mike's telling uh, Henderson where to go. Third and eight, they're coming after him again. Dantzler steps up, finds room, first down to the 49 of the Turks. And Tony Jackson got it. But you know what? You know what? He's popping things periodically now, but instead of running 48 yards or 55 yards, he's running six yards. And he's getting hit by about four red shirts. He's got to make sure they keep doing that because with Woody, it only takes one or two, and he's going to bust one. You hold your breath. Every time he passes that line of scrimmage, how many people is he going to shake? Right now, Maryland's doing the job on him. Over a 31 Clemson school record. Good chance of being the first ever quarterback to run for 1,000 yards and pass for 2,000 yards in one year. Although the running total not really increasing much at all tonight. He's not really helping himself. Ramber brought down by Roundtree and Hill. Outstanding group of interior linemen here for Clemson getting stood up. Good gracious, Will Merritt just got knocked in the backfield, number 50. We're not used to seeing that. Excellent defensive charge by Charles Hill, number 98. No game. Henderson coming on a blitz. Dantzler will be yeah. called for grounding. The rule says he must get outside the tackle box, five yards away from the football, 
and he must throw the ball beyond the line of scrimmage. Henderson was on him so quickly. Yeah, he didn't do either of those. And Henderson he beat have a, a chance. He beat a block this time. We've seen Henderson come free. This time, he does a nice job. You said it before, Bill. He's kind of slippery and slithery, and that's exactly what he does. Number 42, coming right up the gut. They try and block him. He gives the arm under the rip technique. Makes his body small and avoids the block. Additional grounding on the offense. Lost him down. Third down. It was on Gary Bird who tried to come down and block him. A good arm under. When I say make himself small, I mean turns his body sideways. Doesn't give the offensive lineman a lot of body to block. So that's a loss of 10 yards. And now third and 20. They need the 39 of Maryland. Ball start. Prior right to the snap. Ball start on the offense. Five yards, still third down. Make it third down and 25. You think these linebackers are digging these defenses? You saw they were getting ready to come flying in again. It is. It's tee off time. These guys are having a ball. They've got this veteran offensive line for Clemson shaken. They knew what was coming. These are not new stunts. We've seen these in the tapes. And you prepare for them, but right. you're not prepared for the quickness or the strength or the speed of the game. Henderson is absolutely dominating the proceedings here. Let's just keep a camera on him. You'll find the ball. And for again running for his life. Pulls up, fires. It is caught by Crosby, and he's got a first down to the 32. Mike, you said it. Yeah. <laughs> Don't let him out. It's it's amazing. That's why it has to be every play, and it's tough to do because Woody is a fantastic player. He's going to escape. This time he rolled to his left, was able to come back a little to the right to be able to set and throw because it went a long way. Again, look at the pressure, but he gets outside. He gets outside. Roundtree, Duran Roundtree, 71 was at the top of the screen. He's got to keep him inside. 32-yard completion to Crosby. Now to Jasmine. Jasmine picks up to the 26. And we just saw why Clemson is never out of a football game. Not only did Woody break containment and get out to his left, he was able to get his shoulders squared, deliver a perfect throw to a receiver who's a young guy, but who knows exactly how to adjust to his quarterback scrambling ability. Beautiful to everybody except Duran Roundtree. Through the middle, Rambert with the defense maybe looking for an end around. Rambert with a first down to the 15. Now notice this, Mike. Those guards and centers that were getting stuffed about three minutes yep. ago, now they're coming off with more resolve. Their quarterback, their leader, has inspired the unit, and they're back to playing football again. Bernard Rambert that time. Without much resistance through the middle. Nice job by T.J. Watkins, number 73. Down near the last two minutes of the third quarter. And down 18, not a place where the Tigers need to settle for three. Dantzler to the five. He's close to making it first and goal, Clemson. Let's check in with Reese. All right, Dave, Arizona State trying to get back in it against Washington State on a fourth and goal play. Delvon Flowers goes in, standing up. 21-16, Sun Devils back in it, and Stanford holding a 34-16 lead over Arizona as they play about halfway through the third. All right, and Tommy Bowden saw Dantzler come up just short of first and goal. Their fourth trip inside plus territory. The opposition 20. Close enough for a measurement. Of course, up here we never need measurements. He's short. The ball is He's short. By about that much. Just by about that much. That was an easy one to call. That's why I didn't even call it. I knew it was short. Now, Bill, in this situation. Wait, wait, look. What's the color coding? I don't know. Look at that. The rainbow. It's a rainbow the, call. The rainbow. Pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. First word. I thought it was charades or something. <laughs> Everything is charades with you, Michael. <laughs> Your body language can't be seen, though. I'm going to ask Salazzo what that is. Yeah, that was something, huh? Is that like you make the play, you get a treat? <laughs> Maybe it's a Hawaii defense. 
Rainbow Warriors. Sneaking. Now first and goal. Oh, yeah. Knows how to run that sneak. Just like Sean Hill. Pads down. Legs churning right up behind those big guys. Bill, is there, is, from a coaching standpoint, is there no doubt here that it's it's four downs? You don't go for the field goal here. I mean, you, you get the touchdown. I mean, even though probably going to right around the end of the third quarter, you got a lot of time, but isn't this you go for the touchdown You're here? You're 18 points down. You need three touchdowns or two touchdowns with eight, pointer, eight points, uh, the two point conversions plus a field goal. You got to have the touch. So far looking like the best drive of the night for Densley. All day now, and that one in the crowd deflected and intercepted. Tony Jackson, his fifth interception of the year. And guess who deflected it? Number six, Dominique Foxworth. Foxworth in his first, not just his first start, but his first time to play. Another drive ended by the Maryland D. ESPN2's presentation of primetime college football is brought to you by Sudafed. Stop sinus pressure from becoming sinus pain. Take Sudafed at the first sign. And by Ace Hardware. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware folks. Clemson misses a great chance to get right back in this thing with an end zone interception by Tony Jackson. Now tied for the team lead with five picks and back now to Mark Riley who was their top running threat in the first half into the secondary brought down by Kevin Johnson. 14 more yards for Riley. One more look at the deflected interception by Jackson. And as if he hadn't done enough tonight, Dominique Foxworth, not satisfied, knocks the ball up in the air so his teammate can pluck it in the end zone. Kill the drive threat. Intended for J.J. McKelvey and off his hands. Wonder who the newcomer of the week will be in the ACC. Well, option pitch, that one messed up from the beginning and Riley losing yardage. Michelle. Well, Dave, I asked Tony Jackson what it would be like playing in his last home game tonight, and he said, I've been through so many disappointments. Now we're 8-1 and one and in control of our destiny. We've worked so hard to get to this point. It's going to be special. Ralph Friedgen agreed, saying it's only fitting that the seniors' last home game is a sellout. I'm happy for them. I think he's really happy for Tony Jackson right now, Dave. Well, he should be. Baseball player, too, right? Yeah, he's an outfielder. Real good baseball 32nd player. round pick, uh, kind of a late rounder, 97 with the Indians. From the 2-9 and nine freshman year to maybe an 11-1 and one senior year for Jackson in his senior class. You know, and that the point you made right there, Dave, his seen, the senior class, when seniors come in or, or when seniors are going in their last year and you have a quarterback change, you think yours is the transition year and you think it's a bad, bad thing and now it's the best Best year they've had at Maryland for these seniors. We head to the fourth quarter, Maryland 24 6. See, next door at uh, Cole Field House, they've had lots of nights like this. Sold out house, people going crazy, big win. It's been a long time since the atmosphere has been this way inside Bird State. Right to the snap, <laughs> false start on the offense. Five you. yards, still third They're, down. The fraternity of O linemen. Matt Crawford, 78, moves early. Lamar Bryant just leaned right over and popped him right on top of the head. Like, hey, man, come on, for gosh sakes. It cost him all the sprint at practice, probably. Oh, yeah, Ralph, Ralph, they'll pay. And those are drive killers. Those are mistakes you just can't make. Already third and long, now third and 15. Just a four-man rush. Bill for Perry tried to one-hand it and couldn't bring that one in. So the ESPN2 game track and a good place to start for Maryland has been Sean Hill. The scramble and touchdown pass to Bruce Perry extended the margin in the third quarter. An absolutely dominating performance from E.J. Henderson, number 42, 11 tackles already. Woody Dancer throwing two interceptions tonight, and that's the 21st interception for that Maryland defense. They now have 30 takeaways on the year. Second best in the country. Good kick by Bernard. And Jodon Reeves. 
returning to the 30. That's a 48 yarder. Tomorrow night on ESPN, John Gruden's Raiders looking to stay in control of the AFC West with the help of Jerry Rice and Tim Brown. And the Seattle Seahawks look to Mike Holmgren's leadership to get back in the hunt. It's the Raiders and the Seahawks. They'll be exchanging pleasantries as only they can oh, yeah. on Sunday Night Football. John Gruden looks like Chucky. He's that they have the best balanced team in all the NFL. He still yeah. looks like Chucky yes, when he, he makes does. that expression. Dantzler first and ten. Interception and this time it's Henderson. And again off the hands of a receiver in this case Derek Hamilton. E.J. Henderson has really done it all tonight. Oh, and it rains it pours huh Bill? Well there's just no excuse that's lack of concentration. Yep. Henderson has been the go to man. He's developed maturity this year. The ball is thrown perfectly. He is not looking at the football. He's looking to see who's going to ear hole him and it goes right through his hands and guess who's there the omnipresent. <laughs> Start thinking of Willie Lanier and Dick Butkus. That's who this guy makes me think of. Gives sinners nightmares. 31-yard line is where this Maryland possession starts. Bruce Perry. It's the cries of Bruce. And a gain of four. And you know, you go back to Derek Hamilton and the, and the tip ball, Bill, the one he should have had. He had 44 receptions coming into this game. He had set receiving and receiving yards receptions and receiving yards are freshman records this year had the most receptions of starting freshman this year in the country second or tops of even Kelly Washington that we've covered over Tennessee I want to get back to that right after this play Hill late pitches Perry Perry to the eighth first and goal now back to your point Mike Yes, this young man has been doing a marvelous job, but what has the aggressiveness of the Maryland defense done to him? He's not looking at the football. He's looking up the field to see who's going to hit me in the mouth, and he doesn't catch the ball. And now here's Maryland back down on the seven-yard line, and that's what happens when the whole team's playing with great aggressiveness and confidence. What a great pitch by Hill. Waited about yes. as long as he possibly could. Gain of 20, first and goal from the seven. And Perry knocked down at the seven. Jovan Bush, all 300 pounds landing right on him. The way Clemson's lining up in essentially a gap eight look, nine men in the box, the only thing that Maryland's going to be able to do to score is either to run the option or sprint on the corner and throw the ball. I'll tell you, Maryland's got the nails in the coffin. They're just looking to hammer them in yep. right now if they can knock this one in the end zone. Two tight ends, only wide out Jafar Williams. Option the other way, and Perry breaking one tackle out of the edge and then right back down at the eight yard line under Donnell Washington, 320 pound freshman defensive tackle. Nice defensive call by Reggie Herring and a nice play by Rodney Thomas. What you do is you line up and you bait them in the run of the option and then you outnumber them at the point of attack. You force the pitch, and then you got a man in the pitch back's face. Now, Rodney, you got to come down with him. Player down for Clemson. One thing that has to be tough for Clemson fans this year, this is the third year they've had Tommy Bowden. When they hired him, you know they thought, well, we're next. As soon as Florida State maybe comes back to the pack right. a little bit, as they finally have this year. We'll be right there and ready to pounce. Well, in one year, Maryland has jumped the line. They look like they're at the head of the class, the ACC, with a timeout. Jovan Bush was the injured, injured Clemson defender. Helped off, and now third down and goal from the eighth. With Jafar Williams in motion. They're coming after Hill. He gets it off. It is caught, but down at the four, maybe the three, Matt Murphy, the tight end, and now fourth and goal. Charles Hayfley really has been valiant tonight. That's his 13th tackle. They baited him with a blitz, forced the hot throw to the uh, tight end. Hayfley was right on the money, the free safety covering the tight end on the all out blitz. Got him on the ground and forced the field goal with Tim. Good defense. Nick Novak. For what amounts to an extra point. 
20 yarder. A 21 point lead. And just inside that right upright. Continues his hot streak. 12 22 to go. It's now 27 to 6, Maryland. They're five quarters from a championship. Just across the street, that's a classic. The last of a kind, really. Cole Fieldhouse. And uh, next year, Maryland basketball moving into the brand new Comcast Arena. But it's going to be tough to see Cole Fieldhouse. Uh, yeah. No longer the home of turf basketball. Gary, home of many Final Fours in its day. Gary Williams and the crew struggled in the Coaches versus Cancer Classic, and losing to Arizona. In the first round of that, Arizona was six freshmen, five true, one redshirt, but they got Jason Gardner back, who did not go to the draft, one of the only starters coming back. But mostly they got Luke Olson. Well, <laughs> it's pretty good. Novak's <laughs> kick. Hamilton will take the touchback and down to Michelle. Well, Dave, you know this story. Ralph Regan recruited to Maryland as a 190-pound quarterback. But boy, did it change from there. The position changes. He, he went on to special teams for a while, then was briefly made a fullbacker, then a linebacker, fullback, then a linebacker. Finally, offensive guard. But he was so unhappy at guard that he called his dad to say he was transferring. His dad threatened to change the locks on the house because quitters don't live here, he said. Well, young Ralph tore the phone out of the wall, but he never left Maryland. Well, he's been coming back over and over and over again to his alma mater. <laughs> Twice as an assistant and now as the head coach. And a new quarterback on the field now with Dantzler replaced by Willie Simmons, who's uh, seeing just his third action of the okay. year. That expression on his face in the picture says, I came here to play quarterback. Why is my number 61? <laughs> <laughs> they have to protect the quarterback. A lot of ex-quarterbacks have won this game. Simmons sacked on just his second snap. It's C.J. Feldheim with his fourth of the year. Update again from the Pac-10. Reese Davis. Well, Dave, on the 226th birthday of the Marine Corps, it is only fitting that an ex-Marine throw a touchdown pass. Dave Menick firing one on the halfback pass to Colin Henderson. Washington State up 28-16 over Arizona State, and it's a tough night to be from the Palmetto State, Florida, over the Gamecocks big. It's been a tough night all around for Woodrow Dantzler. 11 of 22, 153 yards, three interceptions through the air, and never really became a running threat tonight. In traffic by Maryland and a big return by Randall yeah. Jones the fourth pick of the night Jones who has something in common with region he's also a former quarterback now a safety 31 yards on the return of Jones' fourth interception. Jones was also, what is it, the first true freshman to start at quarterback back in 98 as a true freshman, now finding a home at free safety. Another turnover. Boy, I tell you, Maryland was second in the nation coming in. They may be first going out. They're plus 18 right now. <laughs> And you look at that and you say, where in the world could Willie Simmons have been throwing that ball? It's just adrenaline, folks. It just got away from him. First and goal at the one. Riley goes after it, and he's got his second touchdown. And not a great spirited response from the Clemson defense. What you hope when your team's getting pasted like this is that they'll keep fighting. And the Clemson guys came out and just didn't look spirited. And you say, well, how could you be spirited on the two-yard line? Well, by golly, you just have to. That's how. And that's the thing that Coach Herring will have to teach this young defensive unit. Two scores tonight, 10 now on the year for Mark Riley. He has been a loyal soldier, career backup behind Lamont Jordan, the all-time leading Maryland rusher until this year, and behind Bruce Perry most of this year, but the senior making the most of it. Nothing fancy at all, straight ahead, and Maryland taking Clemson behind the woodshed right now.
ESPN2's presentation of primetime college football is brought to you by Head & Shoulders. Changes dandruff problems into beautiful hair. This party, 16 years in the making. And a lot of pent-up frustration has turned into out-and-out -out joy. 34-6 Maryland. Now in first place all alone in the ACC. And if they handle NC State on the road next week, they will have an undisputed ACC championship. First, they got to catch Derek Hamilton. All the way across the field, another missed tackle. Novak blocked out of the play, and this will be a touchdown. 100 yards for Derek Hamilton. And folks, this is exactly how a team like Clemson gets back into a football game when you haven't been accustomed to winning and you get this kind of lead. It just makes you think, man, if we've got it made now, he's got three yards deep in the end zone. No way he'll bring it out. By golly, he did. Nice block by Joe Don Reams. And just flat outruns the rest of them right there. Number 29, Travis Pugh. You're right, Bill. You know, Ralph Reed is going to say, guys, this is why you can never take a playoff. Oops, I'm wrong. That was Ty Stewart. Ty Stewart. Extra point by Hunt. 34 to 13. That is by far the longest kick return and the first touchdown return of the year for Clemson. 17 years ago today, by the way, the University of Maryland was down 31 to nothing at the half and came back to beat the University of Miami 42 to 40 in the greatest comeback in the history of college sports. And stranger things that have happened than to for a Clemson team with all these weapons to get back into this. Strange as that sounds. Well, it's amazing. amazing about that. Frank Reich, the quarterback of that Maryland team, also the quarterback of the the uh, Buffalo Bills when they came back on the Houston Oilers. So here's, the greatest comeback in uh, NFL. Here's right. what's in front of the Terps now. First place by themselves, thanks to NC State's win at Tallahassee, 34-28. And it's a two-team race. If Maryland stumbles next week in Raleigh, Florida State still has Georgia Tech on its schedule, so they could tie with two ACC losses. And Florida State has the head-to-head, -head, but it, it gets really murky. If you try and break ties in the ACC, this is the only conference I've ever heard of that does not automatically determine a two-way tie by a head-to-head -head result. I it want it to, figures yeah. in, but it's not the only factor. You're going to break that down for us later, aren't you, Dave? Let's see. You probably got about <laughs> another hour. Well, Johnny, <laughs> Johnny Swafford, who's the commissioner of the ACC and heading up the committee for the BCS this year, is here tonight, and maybe we could pull John aside and say how that happened. Here's the high short kick. And not by Perry. Loose at the 33. Clemson ball. Well, well, well. I'm well. telling you, folks, it happens. You just get a little sloppy. You make a couple of mistakes, and you let this bunch back in after you, and you'll have a football game on your hands before you know it. And that guy right there certainly knows it. He will coach the daylights out of this situation with his guys. Never had any control of no, it. No, he, he, he didn't catch the ball in the middle of his body. You catch a football on a kick in the middle of your body, and you look it in. And this is interesting. Willie Simmons yeah. filled the quarterback. Yeah. First pass was intercepted. This one is incomplete, and it was Tory White who got the recovery of the muff by Harry. I thought the same thing, Dave. I thought it was a little odd. I thought... Woody Danzler might head back into the game. He's standing on the sideline with the headsets on. Well, they have absolute confidence in Willie Simmons. Or no he, headsets. He is thought to be the superior passer of the two quarterbacks. And Woody believes in him, too. Lifts up, fires short and complete. Aries Curry at the 30. We talked about Nick Eason, who already has a degree. He's got two more years of football eligibility. Willie Simmons is on target to graduate even faster in May before the next summer session. And he also has two more years. I've never heard of any player. They've got two. They've got two players have done. What do you do with yourself? Hang out? Well, you get another degree. He'll oh. graduate as PhDs, both of them. It's going to be Dr. Simmons. 
And the give is stuffed right at the line. Zachary. Time and again tonight, when called upon, the defensive line, and especially Big Charles Hill, yep. number 98, have come through to make a play for a lost yards. He went right through Will Merritt again, number 50. He's a nose tackle going right through Merritt. Boom. Taking him a yard deep in the backfield. Play the game right here. Fourth and eight. And the four-man rush stepping up complete. This should be enough for a first down. And it's Joe Don Reams with just his third catch of the year. Shouldn't need a measurement at the 22. And they won't. That was awfully close, though. You want him a little bit farther past yeah. the chains than that one. What do you figure, Mike? Seven inches? Oh, yeah. we got to buy a lead sack. Really showing some poise right there. Right in the pocket. Really has a lot of poise. He can play. For tonight, he was only 9 of 28 with two interceptions. He's been picked off once already tonight. That one's going to be close for a first down. As Matt Bailey... Goes up the sideline to the 13. And they marked him back. Said he stepped out at the 16. This Clemson team has a lot of special characteristics. Seven players out here have already graduated. You've already talked about Eason. Simmons is going to graduate early. Sharp people. Chad Carson may end up a Rhodes Scholar. Simmons again to the side. And that's just a little short of the first to Roscoe Crosby. Well, it's a group worth listing by name because it is quite an accomplishment to get their degree with eligibility left. Kyle Young, 3.98 average. We asked him who gave him a B. <laughs> I don't remember what his answer was. I was so impressed. <laughs> Sneaking. Should be a first down and is inside the 13. And from the truck, we get the information. It was integral calculus. Ah, from Michelle Tafoya Vandersall. Integral calculus. Integral calculus? I wish I'd have made a B in that. You know what it is. I wish I'd have made a B in something. Simmons. To the end zone. Caught touchdown, Roscoe Crosby, and it is not over. Now, do you think that Simmons can throw the football? And that's the first time tonight we've seen Mr. Foxworth get beat, the true freshman. I'm telling you, Foxworth? you let up just a little bit, and you think you got it, and you start to celebrate, and you are in trouble against any good football team. First touchdown of the career of Roscoe Crosby. It's not going to be the last. Top wide receiver recruiting the country last year. And Hunt makes it 34-20. So with Dantzler watching his understudy, Willie Simmons takes the Tigers after they recover the muffed short kickoff by Perry to the end zone to make it a game again. Clemson showing some fight, and they come back within two touchdowns with still a long way to go. Eight minutes and 21 seconds. Last kickoff was high and short and ended up in the hands of the Tigers' Torrey White. After Bruce Perry muffed it away. This one comes the other way. And Jackson was an interception tonight. Returns it to the 30. Down to Michelle. Dave, you talked about the graduates on this Clemson team. When Woody Dantzler graduated last August, he took the diploma from Clemson President Jim Barker, and then he proceeded to hug him. Now, Dantzler was told he was the only Clemson graduate ever to hug the president at commencement ceremonies, but just this week, he was perusing the media guide, and he saw a photo of Rod Gardner hugging, hugging the president last May. Well, Woody, you weren't the first, but I'm sure you were just as special. <laughs> Rod Gardner of the Washington Redskins now. Top rookie receiver in the, in the NFL. Yep. Bruce Perry to the 34. Well, I said a little earlier that uh, Maryland was taking, uh, was going to take Clemson behind the woodshed, and I don't think Clemson wants to go. Clemson just drugged them yep. and turned the tables. Yes, and now, they did. And, they, and they're putting a whooping on them, and, and now the load reverts to the offense of Maryland to take some time off this clock to make first downs. Special teams getting Clemson back in. 100-yard kickoff return touchdown by Hamilton. Then we get the fumble. 
offense pressures again. Now up to the defense to get a stop. Okay. And a long scramble by Hill to the 45. They let him escape, and he goes 21 yards. Clemson is loading up the box to force them to throw the football. They've got seven right in this in this vicinity, which is the same as eight or nine if you had a tight end in there, which means Maryland is forced to revert to the audible to throw. They force him, they flush him out, and then the linebackers must come up and make the play and not let him run for a first down. Nice job by Hill. Hill has outrushed Dantzler tonight on the same number of carries by 17 yards. Not many would have expected that. Fullback James Lynch. Let's send you back to Reese Davis. Dave, assuming that the Turks can hang on to this lead, this is why they are playing for at least a share of the ACC title tonight. Florida State, North Carolina State, Chris Ricks trying to save the Knowles, and he could not. For the first time, Knowles lose to an ACC opponent at the Dope, 34-28. How sweet was that for Chuck Amato? Wow. Back to the place he coached for so many years. First ever come away from Tallahassee with an ACC win. Hill breaking two tackles. And the Tiger defense needing to come up with a stop, and just the opposite is happening. Sean Hill getting the yard that everybody was expecting Woody Danzler to get on the other side. Sean Hill just getting enough to move those chains and opportunistic play. When he gets his chances, he's finding the holes and he's getting the job done. He really is faster than he looks. And Mike, you said it so well early in the game. You think you're catching him, but you're not. And when you catch him, he's strong. He rips through tackles. All this with a high ankle sprain all week. Kind of wondered if he might be limited in any way. Well, we've seen our answer. Not at all. Perry. Been an effective tag team member with Mark Riley at tailback tonight. Florida, South Carolina. What's happening down in Columbia, Reese? Well, it appears that the Gators are opening a large can of whooping. Bill Petty to throw, and Travis Carroll is going to pick that and take it back to the house. And the Gators are rolling over Lou Holtz and the Gamecocks 40 10 now in the third quarter. Not that big a surprise, but a big disappointment for the most loyal fans in college football. Perry to the 25. That place was full when they were winless. And they were packing it two years ago, three years ago with one win, and now they're they're packing it to watch a contender. Oh, Although they've obviously they've still got a ways to go. Yeah, they packed it all those years that they were losers. Ralph Frigian most anxious to see his offense produce a first down here. That's, he would love that to is run it. his clock You're set right. out. Forget the score. They want three yards. That moves the chains and keeps the clock going. You sound like you were a coach before. Well, there, that, that's a matter of some uh, discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Hill was ready to call time, but he waited until the play clock was down as low as he could get it without taking a penalty, then called the timeout. Heads up. Every last second. The Dick LeBeau tells a great story. He's now the head coach of the Cincinnati Bengals, but when he was a rookie corner and Yale Larry was the other one, they had mud in their cleats. They were playing in Detroit, and he noticed Yale wasn't ever falling down. And one time out, he looked over. He had Yale had a tongue depressor in his pants, and he was flipping the mud out. But he would, had never told Dick. And, and Dick looks at him like, "Well, why didn't you tell me?" And he said, "Experience, son. Experience. You have to learn your own way." <laughs> Dick never went back out there without a tongue depressor. <laughs> so uh, Sean Hill has experience, and he took it right down to the bare essentials. Ralph Friedgen, class of '69. Thrill of a lifetime, his first head coaching job at his alma mater, and that's a theme around the ACC. The motto, Bunting, Grow, and Franks. It's a thrill to be at your alma mater until your buddies that used to be in the huddle with you start walking in your office thinking they can tell you what to do. Yeah, Coach, I think you should be doing this. Hey, look, I, I remember, Bill, you weren't even good at a reach block. What do you think you're reaching on the goal line for? <laughs> Apparently, you had that happen pretty often. Boy, oh, I'm, you remember that's the word for word. word. That's the voice of experience. <laughs> now, third and three. And Perry, a gaping hole 
slams to the 18, the clock at 438. Yep. And the drive continues. They sold out, Clemson did on a blitz. Blitz gap, Perry found the hole. Yeah, I'm telling no, you. No linebacker there to make the play. You well, see the blitz coming, you see the linebacker coming. Watch this guy right here, Todd, Todd White. Change direction, seal his man inside. There was a blown defense because a linebacker should have been hitting that B gap like he was shot out of a cannon and there was nobody home. Tigers have all three of their timeouts and just about to the point where they're going to have to start using them. Lynch at the 14. And the clock will get inside four minutes before the next snap. John Leak and Charles Hafley on this tackle. 17 tackles unofficially for Mr. Hafley. He moved to, again, he's now at free safety. Went from strong to free, and it's a lot of tackles for a free safety. Well, he's two away from his own school record for a defensive back. 19 against North Carolina. It also adjusts your shoulder pads when you're a little fellow tackling a 260-pound fullback. Well, again, leading the shot, the uh, play clock down before he gets it in the hands of Perry. Perry down to the 10, third and about a yard and a half, coming under three and a half minutes. And Clemson needs to start using the timeouts right now. And Herring gets the first with 326. Down to just a prayer for the Clemson Tigers. Maryland up by two touchdowns, about three and a half minutes to go. The heroes tonight. Where do you start? I start with the offensive line. I know I'm biased, but but uh, this offensive line for Maryland is getting the job done right now. Sean Hills, you know, making opportunistic plays for him, and, and the running attack of Riley and Perry are really getting the job done as well behind that line. I agree with you, Bill. And Riley taking that pitch on third and two. Close enough, maybe, for another measurement. Another timeout taken by Clemson with 313. Love Ralph's story when he got here as a head coach. Finally he got here. Was the head coach in the first his first day as head coach. Said he didn't eat until 10 o'clock at night. Had nothing to eat all day, and it was a pizza. And he said he realized he also was eating the pizza alone. <laughs> he said, so here my first day of coaching I don't eat all day then I'm eating by myself <laughs> welcome to your dream come yeah. true. but <laughs> be careful what you wish for huh I couldn't imagine going all day without eating yep BCS <laughs> is staring Maryland right in the face so you finish this I don't imagine they, you have take care of NC State next week and then you're looking right at the Orange Bowl Maryland beat him in double overtime last year well, the oranges are coming on the field now down on the other end away from where the teams are playing. I started to say there's only been one orange on the field but they just took about six more off. Novak to try a 26 yarder. Or a 17 point lead. 26 yards. Perfect. Maryland which came in averaging 37 points, just as Ralph Regan's last three Georgia Tech offenses did. And if Dandy Don were here, <laughs> he would uh, crank up the song, turn, turn out, out the, the lights. Party's over. You're worse than he is. Yeah, well, you know, what are you going to do? And Clemson, you know, look at, look at Clemson here. Five and three looks like they're going to go to five and four. Remember, you need six wins to be bowl eligible. They have South Carolina. They're at South Carolina. And then the makeup game against Duke. But you need, I'm sure they wanted these quality wins, especially like one over Maryland or next week over South Carolina to try and get into a better bowl. I'm sure especially the seniors want to go out with a bowl. And the better teams you beat, the better bowl you can go to and uh, not going their way tonight. They still need another win to get bowl eligible. It's all happened so suddenly. Their best year since their last ACC championship was six and five. Barely had a winning year. That was six years ago. Their last top ten finish, 1976. Eleven wins. They finished eighth. This should get them into the top ten tonight. They're the first Maryland team to go seven and zero at home. And a gap of 16 years between ACC championships can end in a week. 
And it, it would be well advised for them to avoid that ACC tie-breaking <laughs> mess. You still have to break that down for us, Dave. Well, you got 313. You, you can lose to a team head-to-head, -head, but if you're ranked an average of five spots in the two polls better, you can get the ACC championship. That's absolutely bizarre, that but is not that's right. on the books. No, that's not a yeah, good that, that, that's, that's not right. Let's go find John Swafford. Yeah, we need to, we're going to take a revote on that. Another thing is that Ralph Frisian and his staff will have a chance to teach their squad about what to do to keep the hammer down when you got somebody out of a game and not let them start back into it. Good thing to do tonight would be not to give up the 100-yard kickoff return to Hamilton. Hamilton gets this one. And it ends up at the 41-yard line. Getting it from Reams. Well, let, let's count them off, shall we, game? This is the first pick, Carone Cox. Number 20 for the year. This is Jackson. 21 for the year. This is Henderson. 22 for the year. Randell Jones with a fourth pick of the second half. Number 23 on the year. That is incredible. Plus 18. <sighs> Now plus 17 on the year turnover margin. The injured Tiger is Morgan Woodward, senior tight end, former walk-on from Florence, South Carolina. Morgan came into the, the week, uh, had been nicked up and had just played through injuries. Again, you always hope that it's just something minor. Clemson still needing a win uh, for their bowl picture. To yep. Be finalized. This will drop them to five and four. And they've still got the uh, South Carolina game. And then Duke. In Columbia, they've also got the makeup with Duke on December 1st. Got to win one of those. Well, that South Carolina rivalry is one of those deals where some people say that rivals like that are, are almost like a state religion. And um, the fact is, it's a lot more important than that. You look at this right or wrong. That's how it yep. is. This Maryland team, guys, they break the streak. Clemson had eight straight on them. I mean, with a brand new head coach, going to go to nine and one. Again, the seniors are have to be ecstatic. It's going to be their best year in what thought maybe to be a transition year, and they may make the temporary seats permanent. <laughs> they keep doing this. Well, they may need a lot more than yep. just the 52,000 they've got tonight. This keeps going. It, because, remember, this is really before Friedgen gets a, a real recruiting, recruiting class. And, and you know what? You win like this, the, the school recruits itself somewhat as well. You've got to say, too, that Coach Vanderland and the last coach got some good players in here. There are a lot of good players on this, on this Maryland team. Well, we continue to check on Morgan Woodward with 3.01 to go. Good sign here. Woodward just a second ago helped to a sitting position and now finally up on his feet. Injured on the kick return. Look out, Ralph. Uh-oh. <laughs> They're getting ready. I don't know if I'd want to be the one that dumped it on him, though. That's mine. I'm not oh, sure. Here we go. He's going to be real happy about it. I don't know if he will either, but, and again, for Maryland, new experience, so we'll have to check out their Gatorade dumping technique. <laughs> They've had no practice at that. <laughs> no, look at them, look at them, they're, they're planning it out. No, I think they're saying, you do it. No, you do it, man. No, I'm not doing it. Nope, I'm not even going to help I bet you were good at it. I think safety in numbers is the way to go there. I, I would say, yeah. I bet yeah. you were an instigator. understand, Bill. I... Notre Dame's having some rough years now. When I was there, they were also having some rough years. There was no, no Gatorade in my years. Hey, guys, some of the uh, backup players are being asked to help lift this thing of Gatorade and dump it. And some of them are saying, hey, now you need me, right? I'm a backup, but now you need me. I'm not going to help. They are conspiring. Simmons hit by Rod Littles on a safety blitz. He unloaded on him, and the ball flew about 20 yards out of his hands all the way out of bounds. Wow, he just is going to come from the bottom of your screen. 
Blitzing in, nobody touches him. Simmons has no idea he's coming, no feel for that one at all. And that is one you stay up at night and dream about that you're going to get the blind side of quarterback. And Littles is the strongest of the defensive yep. backs. And they call Pitches. it an incomplete pass. Yeah, his arm went forward. It's a good call. Second and ten. Oh, got knocked forward. <laughs> Blitz is picked up this time. The pass is complete. And J.J. McKelvey reaches the 40 out of 18. You've got to hand it to Simmons after taking a shot yep. like that in the back. He just jumps in there and fires the next one for a nice completion. Even though things are looking very dismal at this point. One timeout, 2.40 to go. Simmons, most of the fourth quarter for the ineffective Wood Road dance layer. That one could have been caught a little low for Zachary, and he can't bring it in. And that looks like a real bad throw, but that was the only place he could throw it and get it between the defenders. Sometimes as a receiver, that running back coming out of the backfield, you've got to be able to change directions and make those catches. Good work for Willie Simmons. Now, again, yes. uh, Woodrow is, uh, is graduating. He'll be gone, so this will be Willie Simmons' team if he's going to, you know, looks to inherit the job. Good work for him. Dantzler tonight, 183 total yards. Came in sixth in the nation, averaging 312. And on the road, 422. This will be overthrown for Zachary. So they hold him almost, well, right at about the 250 yards below his road average. And, and also, remember, this is a guy who had success against this Maryland team last year and the year before. A combined 708 yards of total offense he had in the last two years of wins. Yep. They've really kept him in check tonight. Thanks. What, and what was it about the plan that nobody else has been able to do? To well, I, well, they really did a nice job of keeping him contained. He never he broke outside a couple times and made some plays, but they kept him contained and then didn't even give him an escape route EJ. up the middle. They brought EJ, EJ and the linebackers up the middle. EJ was the good right to finish him off. They brought him again, got it off, caught. Derek Hamilton hit immediately. First down, though, and they'll give him the 26-yard line and a gain of 14. Comes nice up again. Nice job up yep. front. Yep, nice job of protecting. Nice flip through. Boy, that one was threaded. This is EJ on the previous play. Runner was accurate. Simmons on the roll. And the keep. Henderson on his tail at the 22, and the clock at 208. Henderson's on everybody's tail. <laughs> oh, my God. He is. He is. 13th tackle, one and a half sacks, an interception. He got to be defensive player of the week. Fundamentally sound football team, this Maryland team, both offensively and defensively. They do everything very well. Well, I watched Thursday practice, and they work fundamentals on Thursdays, and most teams do not do that. Maybe they should. Looking for the Terps, second and six. Incomplete. Intended for Crosby. And third and six with 204. Got Willie trying to straighten Crosby out. He was he was looking for him to hook it in. He's having to instruct and uh, get timed up with his people. It's okay to have a little fun on the bench now, but. Maryland started a little early, cost him two touchdowns. Yep, you're right about that. Simmons. Oh, nobody there. All three receivers cut their patterns off at the 15. And they're all looking at each other. He's yeah. expecting yeah. certain adjustments to certain coverages. And they were up in press man there, and he wanted both those youngsters to go deep, and they hooked up. Last chance here for Tommy Bowden and the Tigers on a fourth and six. And that flag. Flag. With time still on the play clock, we'll see what Joseph Ryder has. Oh, oh he's got That's fourth and 11. Illegal formation, and they will flag that before the snap of the ball. It's a procedure penalty. Tommy Bowden's second two-game losing streak. It's the second time he has not followed up a loss with a win in his three years at Clemson. A lot of inexperienced people on the field right now. They couldn't get lined up properly. 
They need to get to the 16 to keep this drive going. One timeout. Two minutes left here. Simmons. Another safety blitz. Going deep for Curry, who is tripped up at the goal line, and it's incomplete. And they baited him into throwing deep into double coverage. And now the celebration will begin in earnest. Now you can do it. And I think we all know Coach Friedgen will let the team know that they shouldn't have started to do it when they did it a little earlier. Now they can enjoy it. The way football is these days with Willie Simmons on the field throwing and the dangerous wide receivers and the long kickoff uh, return, they could have very easily been back in it by now and we could have a, a big time finish. But Maryland's offensive line took over, knocked the ball down the field and softed the game. Perry. And the clock rolling. Defense's story of the night, E.J. Henderson. Boy, he can absolutely bring it. Great instinct, great knowledge, great awareness, great feet there to take down Woody Danzler. Woody shakes so many people. That was a nice play there. Here's the interception, quick hands. And he's got another year. Uh -oh. Getting ready down there. The longest stretch futility in ACC history ending this year. No team had ever gone as long without even the top three finish. So that's what you get for that kind of turnaround. I don't <laughs> think he might. He's taking it well. <laughs> yeah. Big Ralph can smile a little bit now. Nine and one will make you smile. Seven and zero oh at home will make you smile. Really is incredible, Bill. I mean, you, you are a coach to, to, to have this happen in your first year. You take a look at the Maybe the, the first of what they all hope many dousings here. Most times when you are successful, it's, it doesn't happen your first year. If you're lucky, it might happen your second, third, or fourth. Wonderful job by this study and the team. Got to be national coach of the year. Mike Price right up here for Washington State, but how can you say anybody's done a better job than Ralph Friedgen down to Michelle? Well, two things are expected here tonight. One, we're hearing rumors that these students may rush the field. They're already throwing oranges. The other is a tradition Ralph Frugin began after the first home game, and that is singing the fight song in the student section with the students. We'll get a shot of that a little bit later. He got a little embarrassed after the first time he sang. He's turned the singing duties over, but he always conducts the band. Michelle, that first rumor's true. Michelle better run. Get out of there, Michelle. <laughs> it's the oranges I'm concerned about. <laughs> Wow. Absolute bedlam. The likes of which College Park, Maryland hasn't seen in 16 years. Good for them. Good for them. They're a win away from an undisputed ACC championship. NC State up next week. Hey, hey, hey. And our final again tonight, 37 to 20. They ended eight year losing streak to Clemson. For Mike Golick, Bill Curry, and Michelle Tafoya, Dave Barnett, thanks for being with us in a wild scene at Bird Stadium tonight. NFL tonight up next. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com, your home for college football on the internet.